Number three, every man a leader. You might not be a leader at your place of work, but when every man comes home, you're a leader. If you live with your parents and your mother doesn't have a man, you're the man of the house. If you live with your woman, you are her leader. If you have children, you are their leader. Every man is a leader in his home. We must first master that and make sure that we're rising to the occasion every single day, knowing that one day we might graduate and have leadership roles outside of the home. So we're going to be speaking about leadership. Number four, we'll cap this off with our All Saints meeting style, wherein everyone gets to speak up because my goal is always not for this to be about me, but for this to be about all of us. It's about the community, about the assassin. So I look very much so to hearing uh, these stories of how you all are going through challenges and overcoming them. These are the things that let us know everyone's going through something. You know, some people make it look like it's all beautiful, keeping it player 24 seven, but everyone's going through something and you love to hear good news. So we'll be going through that at the end. And they can still hear us, right? Yep. Fantastic. Why is life so boring? It's a question people sometimes ask. Why is life so boring? If you're smart, you ask yourself this question. If you've given up, you don't ask yourself this question. This is just what it is. But it doesn't have to be that way. But first, I want to give you guys a little anecdote. I want to just kind of drive off the road a little bit with you, if you don't mind. I found this funny. This occurred today. Little Broad texts me on Instagram, which I mostly don't have the Instagram app on my phone. She had messaged me on Instagram, and I said, hey, why are you even paying attention to my Instagram? You don't even follow me on Instagram. She re replies, says, I don't follow you on Instagram because you don't follow me on Instagram. I don't follow you on Instagram because you don't follow me on Instagram. I thought that was quite interesting for a number of reasons. Number one. What is a follower? You know, it's kind of one of those things like peanut butter and jelly. It's like you have left and you have, you have up and you have, you have follower and you have leader. So if you're my woman, who's the leader in this? Me or you? Me. So it makes sense that you would follow me. Frankly, I really don't care because it's Instagram. It's a fake world. But I think the interesting piece of psychology is why does she feel as though I need to follow her. And if I did follow you, what would there be to see? Is your life exciting? Are you doing anything interesting on a regular basis? I thought about it. I, I didn't tell her this, right? I'm sure she's watching this right now. So we'll play with her a little bit. But if I was watching your life, do you live an exciting life that is worth me watching or worth anyone else watching? If you were following yourself, break your mind on that. If you were following yourself, would you be interested to follow yourself? I was like, Shorty, your life is boring. There's nothing for me to see there. You wake up, go be a wage slave for 10 hours, then you come back home. That's pretty much what you do every single day, Monday through Friday. Then on the weekend, you might go for coffee with your friends in the same couple places that you can go to in the small town that you live in. What is there for me to see? Hell, what is there for you to see? You'd be born watching your own damn life. Which is to say, all of us should create a life story that we ourselves would want to read, certainly that we would want others to read. But the most important thing I just want to give you guys as a side note is if you're dealing with a woman, because I know most of the people listening are men, and we're talking about leadership. If you're dealing with a woman and she doesn't view you as her leader or not even specifically you. She doesn't view the man as her leader. She's not willing to be here to let you be here. That'll never change. That will never change. Don't forget that. You are the leader. Whether she recognizes that is a different thing. So you have to ask yourself, if she's not willing to follow me, She's not the one I would let be within my home where I am certainly the leader. I might go out there and not be the leader. When I come home, I am the leader. I would never let a woman into my home who doesn't view me as the leader. And what's more, I didn't say this to the girl. It's like, you don't follow me, but you follow other people. Are they leaders? And so I challenge all of you to ask, what, look at what you're following, whether it's on Instagram whether it's the books you're reading, whether it's the teachers you're listening to, whether it's the friends you're spending time with, 
who are you following? There's so many ways in which we're following and we don't even realize it. We're submitting to forms of leadership and we don't even realize it. The truth of why I don't follow anyone on Instagram is because I create apps. Instagram is an app. There's something called user experience. When the person designed this app, they designed it such that a part of signing up is you choose to follow people. I'm thinking of it like a businessman when I go through and I'm making my own decisions. I'm not letting the user designer, the person who did the user design, user experience, tell me what to do. It was through suggestion when you sign up. This Here's some accounts you can follow. Might be some random famous person, Kim Kardashian, Kanye West. Your mind's turned off. You're just like, oh, okay, boom, 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 boom. Follow, 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 follow. They make all these suggestions. The power of suggestion is extremely strong. Do you know if you have people at a gambling table? You know, they train the dealers at a gambling table to offer you bets. There's a game called craps. There's this one bet called a, a hard, hard ways. These are low probability bets, low probability of winning. The dealers are trained to once the bet loses, they say, hey, do you want to come back up on that bet? And just asking that question increases conversion by 60%. They didn't tell you to come back up on the bet. They just asked you. And that increases conversion by 60%. So the casino trains them to offer you a bad opportunity. And just because it was offered, you took it. Just because they suggested. Suggestion is very powerful. Protect your mind. And also protect your house. Make sure you invite women in there who respect you as a leader. And we're going to get to our core topic, but I want you guys to remember, as you consume life, as you consume this information, you consume it from a boss's perspective, viewing yourself as a leader. If this is a family and you're the man, you're in the center, you're the core, you're the patriarch, what, what sense does it make that you need to follow any of these persons? They follow you. You're the heart and soul of this organization. They follow you. And there can't be any misunderstanding or disagreement. Just imagine you go to a huddle with a football team. You got the quarterback. You got the hiker. You got the offensive lineman. And the quarterback says, hey, man, okay, here's the play. We're going to do And the offensive lineman is like, hold on, hold on one second. What if we do this? And then the, you know, the tight end is like, hold on, hold on. Well, what if, I got an idea. Give me the ball. It's not going to go anywhere. You need leadership. The key is to realize sometimes you're the leader, sometimes you're the follower. Sometimes you're the leader, sometimes you're the follower. But when you are the leader, make sure that you're willing to step forward and do your job. Don't shy away from it. The problem is often we shy away from it. Do you know that many of us are not even the leader in our own life? In our own life, we're not even the leader. I remember when I was that way and I was a young man. You asked me, Marquette, why'd you go to college? So everybody, yeah, that's what they say you need to do. I went to Teach for America after college. Marquette, why'd you go to Teach for America? My girlfriend applied to Teach for America, so I didn't, wasn't sure what I was going to do. So I applied to Teach for America, applied to law school, because other people were doing it. I wasn't coming up with ideas. I wasn't leading my own path. And you know, when you follow the crowd, it's comfortable. No one's ever telling you that you're dumb. They're not telling you you're weird. When you follow the crowd, it's so comfortable. You got people all around you. But they say it's lonely at the, at the top. It's lonely at the top. At the bottom, crowded as hell, comfortable. Lonely at the top. The question is, are you willing to be lonely? Are you willing to step out by yourself? Uh, hit me with that. Uh, hit me with those super chats real quick. You need a mic. Got you. Okay, great. I guess I'll start it back there next time. Fantastic. We have King Tune said, peace to the saints. Peace Hope the saints. you, along with the saints in attendance, are well. Looking forward to the ism. Yes, indeed. We have Rob said, dropping my ties in the collection plate. Appreciate you. Jay, the center, said, thank you, saint. Keep up the good work. Appreciate Jay. He's a big supporter. Little Jimmy. Little said, Jimmy, boy. There's hundreds of people on social media speaking very negative about my family's business. Whoa. It's hurting our reputation badly. How would you navigate this and what's the best mindset to have right now? You know, you don't even really need to think about mindset. You need to think about action because you're in the midst of the war right now. And so your first question in business in general is how do I drive the transaction? That is the purchase. And so right now, presumably these persons who are giving you negative reviews are 
reducing the number of transactions occurring in your business. So you need to ask yourself, if this is something that we cannot defeat and you have to assess that, then we just need to change the name of the business and you know create a new facade for the business, change the name. So if they write a bunch of bad reviews saying, you know, Dehaven's Ribs Shack is a terrible place, then you just go ahead and change it to Montreal's Rib Shack and then keep it going, right? Now the, uh, the reviews don't apply to you. Uh, also, if it's, say, for example, on Google, you can get those reviews uh, removed. So there's a number of things to consider. I don't know precisely what the source of that is. That's something that you want to go through in detail. But there are many things that can be done. But in terms of mindset, you have the mindset that you always have, which is to keep it player and don't worry and focus on the dollar, which is to say, are they hurting my bottom line financially? If they are, let's deal with this and take action. You don't need to feel any kind of way. Okay, on PayPal, we have EJ says, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Rick said, peace to the saints, my tithing for Sunday service. Appreciate you. On Cash App, we have Nick, St. City Nick said, peace to the saints, tuition for Sunday service. Peace I appreciate you. Jonathan said, peace to the saints. Shout out to Jonathan. Marco says, peace to the saints, contribution for the collection plate. Peace to the saints. Gio says, collection plate, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Johnny sent tuition. Shout out to Johnny. Austin said, tuition. Shout out to Austin. Ken sent $50. Baller alert. And said, Sassin Congregation. In a real way. Darren said, Tithes, Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. Ken P says, Peace to the Saints, Tuition. Peace to the Saints. And Caleb says, Tuition. Shout out to Caleb. We're caught up. Fantastic. And you know the funny thing about that young lady who said, you know, I don't follow you because you don't follow me. And I'm like, okay. So you're like 23, 24. I got like a damn near a decade of life on you. You, know, you go to a basic job and every day is the same for you. But what would you expect me to teach, uh, to learn if you were, if I'm following you? What am I about to learn from you following you? Where would we end up with me following you? That's the arrogance. That's the hubris. You don't follow me. Where would we end up if I followed you? It's right. You feel me? <laughs> We'd both be down bad if I followed you. If I came from where I am, and followed you to where you are, then we'd both be in poverty. We can't even survive on your income. If I came from where I am and followed you and said the extra 10 years of life I have on you, I'm gonna pretend I don't have them and we're gonna follow your knowledge. We're gonna be moving very slowly. I say that to alert you to make sure you don't let a woman in your house who doesn't respect your leadership, but also know that there are people out there in the world who will give you advice and guidance they don't know much more than you. In fact, in many cases, they know less but are unduly confident. They know less but are unduly confident. So you think, man, he's so confident. I think I got to, he might know something. No, he doesn't. You know another term for a con artist? They call him a confidence man. A con artist is also known as a confidence man. They project confidence. And based on that, you say there must be something behind it. I'm going to follow him. He knows what he's talking about. He knows how to con you, but you don't know much else aside from that. We're talking about happiness and success. Uh, this is a, a couple of the saints, and this is a, a good friend that um, was, uh, he wasn't within my business, but we shared an office space. And we also shared a common investor. So I'll tell you why we have this picture here. But first off, excitement requires risk. If you want to have a happy life, you actually need some excitement. And what is excitement? Excitement is that beautiful mix of things that uh, it makes you a little bit scared because you've not done it before or there's some level of risk. So it's a little bit scary, but it's fun. It's kind of like a roller coaster. You know you're not going to die, but you might. And that's exciting. Excitement requires risk. If you want to have an exciting life, you have to be taking risks in your life. And here's the great thing. Mostly you won't die. Mostly the roller coaster and you don't die unless you're in China or India. Something's happened a couple of times. Be careful out there. Achievement requires risk. That's the interesting part. Excitement, which is a foundational aspect of happiness. It's newness. It's novelty. It's the spice of life variety. Also, achievement requires risk. What do you mean, Marquette? If you'd like to make some more money, you might have to invest. If you'd like to make some more money, you might have to go try something new. Like, for example, there's a young man came over here yesterday, left Arizona, drove over here so that he could measure me up for some suits. Why? Because he's a kind guy. I'm sure he is a good guy. But beyond that, 
He has a suit business. So he said, well, if I drive out here, yeah, it's going to take some of my time. Never met him before, but he agreed to it and measure him up. I'm going to have to invest my own money to, to get the suit done. But when he wears the suit, I know a minimum of 10,000 people are going to see the suit. A minimum of 10,000 people who respect his style and taste. So as a business guy, you got to think, well, how much money would I have to spend to get 10,000 impressions with an ad unit? A lot more than I'm about to spend on this $50 worth of gas to get over there. And then another 100 or so bucks to get the suit made. And it's going to be the gift that keeps on giving because every time he wears the suit, it's a new advertisement. And every time someone says, I like the suit, he might just say, oh, King Chroma made this piece me up. Man, oh, love it. Love it. Go to www. Boom. That's smart. He took a risk because he could have showed up here and I could have been an arrogant douchebag like people say I am on the Internet. Right. <laughs> right. I could have been a complete a-hole instead of saying, oh, hey, man, nice to meet you. You know, got fitted up. Hey, are you hungry? OK, great. My car's getting wrapped. Let's go check that out. I'm take you to the grand opening of this guy who's doing wraps. OK, you, you never been in Las Vegas? Oh, take you to my favorite steakhouse. Boom. Go have something to eat. You know, post on IG. Hey, man, he has a business coming out, launching on January 10th. Boom. Then he goes back. Boy, that's a win for him. That's a real good win. He took a major risk. And you know, one of the things that, you know, excitement requires risk and excitement is exciting. But here's the funny thing about excitement. You have to still be consistent, which is not as exciting. Excitement is fun. And it gives you that, that feeling in a roller coaster in your stomach, but you still have to be consistent to make your excitement and that risk turn into achievement. What do I mean by consistent? Meaning he came out here, he did the easy part, got to meet someone he respects, took the measurements, had a fun time in Las Vegas. Now he still has to send off the measurements, interface with his manufacturer, handle supply chain and shipping, and then make sure that he provides delivery of the garment in pristine condition. So there's still a lot of things to do. Don't ever forget the consistency part. The excitement part and the achievement part, taking the risk, that takes a lot. It takes a gut load to be able to manage stress and risk. And if you're a great man to say, how do I enjoy the stress and risk that others aren't willing to take on? And then once I embrace that, how do I do what it takes to do this on a consistent basis, which is how champions remain champions? Huh? Shout out to the magic man. He's actually here in the, there he is, there he is. So this is a, a gala that I go to every year in DC. And I invited a number of folks. These are uh, two of the folks who are smart enough, wise enough, and wealthy enough to come. They came to this gala. This guy, I don't know if I had told you at the time, but he's worth 100 million now. Yeah, yeah, he had a company that in tech we call a unicorn. A unicorn, billion dollar valuation. Abby Wamimo, African brother, came over here, did well for himself. Now, these guys had a chance to meet this guy. I don't know if they exchanged contact information or if they're you know, linked on LinkedIn, who knows, but they had an opportunity to meet a guy in the flesh worth $100 million. Young guy, too. Don't we all look about the same age? He not old. That's important. But see, I go to the gala every year, so I know who's going to be there. Friends of mine. It's no risk. I don't get nervous going to something I've been to many times. But these guys showed up. They don't know anybody there. They don't know what people are going to be wearing. They don't know if it's going to be a super snooty dinner and like buy forks. Oh, which fork do I grab? They don't know if they're going to be the only black guy there, you know, this man wearing the motherfucking Harry Potter suit, he don't, <laughs> you know, they are going into a new experience that involves risk and nervousness and they embraced it and it's always going to pay off. Now, here's a quotation from a woman. I'm shocked even made this, uh, figured this out. Helen Keller, uh, what do you guys know about Helen Keller? Blind deaf. deaf and blind. Good Lord, I'd be mad if I couldn't see these thick girls. Yes, she was deaf and blind, couldn't hear, couldn't see. That seems like a very unpleasant life. But still, apparently, she lived a life. I guess using Braille or something, I don't know what the hell she was using, Morse code, she was able to share this gem with us, which is life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. It's either a daring adventure, you're going hard, you're doing exciting things. You're making a name for yourself. You're becoming famous. You're becoming wealthy. You're becoming well-respected, well-known in your community. People care about you. You matter. It's either all of those things or it's not even worth it. What are we doing here?
This from a woman who's blind and deaf. She could be sitting here right now, wouldn't even know we were doing this. <laughs> you heard me? She'd be sitting right there. I'm over here talking right in front of her. She can't see or hear. You know how disconnected from life she is, but still managed to find life? You got people who have all of their senses and they walk around like they're deaf, dumb, and blind still. Right? It's crazy. Now, I like to do exciting things too, but sometimes when you watch a master at work, things look easy. Like when you watched uh, Devin Haney beat the crap out of Regis Progray, woo, that looked easy. Watching Regis Progray, that looked difficult. Good Lord, he was getting beat up badly in front of millions of people. That looked extremely challenging. He did get paid though. Probably his biggest paycheck, right? Shout out to New Orleans. You don't get money like that in the NO. So he did his thing. Shout out to him. But when you watch a master, things tend to look easy, easier than they are. Or you forget that there's work and stress involved. Almost in everything great that you do, there's a level of stress unless you're wise enough to transmute the stress and the risk into joy, into excitement, into happiness, into opportunity. All these men right here, the saints. Created our first trip, Men's Trip 2024, taking them to Hoi An, Vietnam. These are both real photos of Hoi An, Vietnam. I've seen both of these scenes with my own lot, with my own eyes. To take these guys, these 30 guys, and show up in this environment, in this environment, that's crazy. Like that, like just visualizing it, it's even hard to map these guys into this environment. When we go for our runs. We're going to be running through rice fields. We're going to be running through rural places, oxen, cows, just walking down the road, walking down the dirt road. That's exciting. That's really fun. It's cool. It's crazy. Ain't it? <laughs> yeah. And we're going to be here too, right along this river. Out of place. Memorable. It's going to be a great memory for us who get to live that. One, because just being in Hoi An, Vietnam is really cool. Even if you went by yourself, it would just be an amazing experience. But doing that with 30 of your good friends is an insane experience. We're even also creating an experience for the people who are watching. You feel me? <laughs> you feel me? Like, we're creating an experience for them now. Like, if we were to go in 2024 and come back in 2025, I'm like, I remember you. Absolutely. Because the likes of this you have never seen before and you will never see again unless you see us. So I say that to say, this is really cool. It's really fun. But what does it involve? I have to fly over to Vietnam with a tremendous amount of money. And I have to do deals with a bunch of different vendors, hoteliers and you know, clothiers and hand them more money than they make in one year and expect them to keep their word when I come back six months later. So I could show back up and all the people I did the deals with rented out their entire hotel, hand them tens of thousands of dollars for the hotel and the, the clothier. I said, hey, here's $10,000. I need you to guarantee me 100 suits and you're the shoemaker. Here's this $1,000. I need you to guarantee me this number of uh, shoes. And then I show back up and their shop is closed. Or I show back up and they're like, oh, no, I don't remember. It's somebody else. It's not me. It's somebody else. All kinds of things could possibly go wrong. There's like an infinite number of things that could go wrong. And then I look dishonest, uh, you know, unprepared, uh, like I'm cheating or scamming, right? And I did everything right to provide this phenomenal experience to transport these men into something out of a movie. And I still did it. Because it's fun and it's, it's exciting and it's what gives life color. And I've already been to both of these places. And then when I bring these guys with me, it's like I'm there for the first time. And that's what life is about, figuring out how do you keep reengaging that experience. When you look at people who get addicted to crack cocaine, what they often say is that it's that first high that you're trying to chase again, which they never, never get. Fortunately, this is the, the greatest of highs, which you actually can reachieve and reachieve and reachieve natural high, real high. This is important because like, say you become a successful man, you have a wife and you, you live a very high level life. Your wife might say, that girl's poor. Why are you dealing with that other woman? Well, because you have been with me for five years and we're very wealthy. And uh, when you get inside of a Rolls Royce, it just feels like home. 
when she gets inside of a Rolls Royce, she's like, oh my God, like, get in the selfie. You know, like you, you now, it's like you just got the Rolls Royce for the first time again. And you're, you're now just creating a psychological experience for yourself. Yeah, she's enjoying it, but you brought her there almost as a tool of your own excitement and happiness. Figuring out how to influence and control your own mind is what a great man is able to do. When you can master your own mind, then you can master the minds of others. The problem is everyone wants to be a boss of other people instead of being a boss of themselves first. You want to be a leader of others instead of leading yourself first. But know that risk is a critical aspect of life. How do you embrace risk? What are the kind of risks you can engage in? To get some excitement. Well, you got to risk something that matters to you or else you won't even pay attention. You know, I always use the metaphors of the gambling table because we're in Las Vegas and in St. City. This is clear way to observe human nature. Everyone does the same things for the most part, but it's all about the levels. As they say, there's levels to this ish, right? You might go to a gaming table. There's one guy, he's playing a hundred bucks. You lose a hundred bucks. He's stressed, <laughs> right? No, for real, it's, that, it's like that. There's another guy who's at the gaming table, he lose $100,000 and he might not be stressed. They're doing the same thing, they're gambling, might even be gambling the same percentage of their income, but it's just levels, levels of meaning. I say that to say this, you have to risk something that matters. The guy who goes in there and he plays $100, he's playing enough money that he's getting a feeling from the risk of gambling. Because if it was too small an amount, he wouldn't feel anything. So it wouldn't even be worth it. So even if, even though it's $100, it means something to him. The guy who's playing $100,000 is playing $100,000 because the amount of money that he has, that's the only amount that can give him a feeling. If the guy who's playing $100,000 was instead playing $100 and he lost it, it wouldn't even register. So he's, he's trying to get a feeling, right? It's always levels and percentages. Remember, levels and percentages. The guy who loses $100, he might lose 1% of his income. The guy who loses $100,000, it might just be 1% of his income. Percentages. So risk something that matters to give you a feeling. Don't gamble. By the way, I'm, don't gamble. I'm just using this as a metaphor. Don't gamble. When I say risk capital, I mean risk capital by investing the capital. When you invest, that doesn't mean you're guaranteed to get money back or to get a percentage. When you invest capital, you're risking the capital to make more money. It's, a, it's similar to gambling, but not as risky. It's smart, you might say. And it also has to be a habit because it, it, it hits your stomach when you risk capital. So it has to be a muscle that you build up, just like going to talk to women. You know, you might be nervous, go talk to the first couple ones, but if you knock it off your three a days, it's nothing to you. It's nothing to a boss. Risk your health and life. Quet, what are you talking about? Did you just tell us to risk our life? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll elaborate on why you should try that out every now and then. It's fun. Do it in meaningful ways. Like me, I ask myself, am I willing to die doing this? If not, I don't want to do it. Dumb chicks are like, you know, have you ever done skydiving? No. You should do it. Like, I love it. No, no, I shouldn't do it. Because if I died skydiving, I'd be embarrassed. <laughs> I'm not worried about dying. I'm worried about how I die. A great man, how did Marquette, Marquette Devon Burton died because he jumped out of a flight, out of an airplane at 3,000 feet. Why did he do it? You might ask for fun. Of all the things I could have achieved in life, I died just because I want to jump out of an airplane. Like there's no glory in that. There's no achievement. Any one of us could jump out of an airplane. We can all do that. I don't want to die doing something we can all do. If I was Regis Progre and I was fighting Devin Haney and I got killed in that ring, I'm like, ah, oh, that's the way to go. That's the way to go, because none of you guys would have got in there with Devin Haney, but I did. I'll die that way. That's a good way to go. I always think if, you know, you get to the heaven's gate, there's God there, and, you know, you're waiting in a long line, hopefully. Probably not as long as the line to hell, <laughs> right? But it's a, it's a long line nonetheless. You know, all the good people that die from around the world, it's kind of like jail. You know, when you, as, soon as, you, 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 as soon as you come in... <laughs> As soon as you come in, they're like, what you in for? And, you know, there's certain things you don't want in your jacket, certain things you don't want to be like, oh, man, I'm in for petty theft. Cats be looking at you like, bro, you know, I out of here with that. You know, like you want to be in there for some, some real. So people be like, oh, he's a real one, right? It's just like when you had the pearly gates. They're like, oh, what you in for? You're like, oh, I jumped out of an airplane. They're like, oh, you're an idiot. Okay, for sure.
for sure. <laughs> it's exciting, huh? <laughs> you and like some chick named Sarah jumped out of the airplane, died. Air, yeah. Didn't deploy. Okay. Yeah. I heard that one before. But then like what you die for, you're like, man, I was, I just left, bro. I was in a, a championship boxing match, man. We was going in and he caught me with a nasty one. I went out, but I'm, I damn near took all the glory, man. It was a million people watching. They were yelling. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I want to go like that. That's glorious. And if you are successful at that, you have achieved. You've achieved something if you're successful at that. You jump out of an airplane risking life and limb. If you're successful, you don't achieve anything. And anyone could have done that. So risking life and health is a meaningful exercise to engage in, nothing wrong with it, but choose how and why you do it and value your life. If you really care about yourself and your existence on this earth and you think you're a valuable, intelligent person who have things to contribute, why would you risk your life for something so silly? I don't even like to drive on the freeway unless I'm in the zone. Honestly, I don't. Because I think the average person's a moron. I don't want to be at the mercy of their stupidity. They over here, you know, trying to tweet while they're driving on the freeway and kill me. Hell nah. So I always want to be thoughtful about these things. I value myself. I value the work I put in. You should too. That doesn't mean don't take risks. You need anything? Oh, you're helping me, Kinetic. Okay, great. Then the last thing, risk relationships. You're like, damn, quit, boy, you crazy. Yeah, risk them relationships. What do I mean by that? Well, sometimes you got a woman, whether it's your wife or your girlfriend, you might have to risk that relationship. What do you mean? I'm not saying do anything crazy. I'm not saying just go out and just start slaying and dangling indiscriminately. I'm saying put it to the test, you know? Oh, you love me, do you? Okay, great. Well, here's the goal that I'm working on right now. Um, I need these 10 things done from you by this deadline, and they're critical, by the way. So, yes, there's some pressure here. I, I need you to do this. This is important. And if they can't do it, boom, get them out of there. Get them out of there. Yes, you're risking the relationship. You're requiring something of the relationship. Do you know how many hollow relationships you have that you don't even know are hollow until you actually put it to the test? Just imagine people think that they have an alliance. Just It's kind of like uh, the United States and Israel. It's an alliance as long as it's Israel asking America for help because America has the army and the money and the population. But if America turns around and asks Israel for help, like, hey, Israel, we just a war just popped off with China. <laughs> they got hella people <laughs> and hella stuff. So uh, we're going to need some help. How many troops can you send over? Then you realize, oh, damn, it doesn't go both ways. This whole time I thought we were locked in, but I've been helping you or I just haven't been requiring anything of you. And now that I do require something, I require you to contribute to this relationship. I just figured out you can't contribute. See, that's where wealthy men go wrong. You got the girl. She might not have necessarily been there just because you're wealthy. Maybe she liked you. But you forgot that, like, you're providing all this stuff, all this infrastructure. You're me, dinners, cars, trips, you know, everything. And you never asked her to contribute. She can't contribute anything. You gave her that first task, like, hey, this is my goal in my business. I need you to do these 10 things. And you figure out she's incompetent. Put those relationships at risk, which is to say you got to test it. And I used to say, you know, you got to test your man because he might look good, but on the inside, he's fake like a breast implant. Huh? Yeah, your, your buddies, your friends, yeah, test them. See if they're actually there for you when it counts, if they'll show up for you when, they, when you need them. That's the most important thing. So easy for someone to click like on a, you post something on Instagram, click the like. You, you ever notice you might post something? I'm not talking about myself because I can't differentiate between who I actually know, like you guys, people whose hands I've sh shook and like strangers, right? Because there's too many now. But you notice like you might post something, you got like your own family members, your actual friends, and they don't even like the photo. It's like, damn, you can't even click double tap on my photo to like my photo. Like I, you're actually my friends and family. Imagine if I actually asked you for something real. Imagine. Excitement, risk capital. This is a Example of risking some capital. Uh, Wade actually did this product some time ago. I just texted him today. I was like, hey, are you out of this? Because someone asked me, they're like, hey, um, do you still do the black uh, yeah. velvet? Yeah, you saw him ask that? Yeah. And yeah, I designed it, but but gave it off to Wade and he did the selling. I was like, Wade, you got any more of these? I just texted him. We said he doesn't have any more, which means he put up the capital, risked his capital, and then sold out all the product, made money. That's what it's like. And, and this watch right here, um, St. Flo's. How much money did he uh, give up for this watch? 
Less than 3,000. Less than 3,000. Mm -hmm. How much money did he receive selling these watches? Over 15,000. Over 15,000. You got to risk the capital. Now, here's the question. When St. Flo's hands me $3,000, I'm sure there had to be a feeling like, ah, damn. Not because not it's me, just because you handing somebody $3,000. Right? Like, I know when, when St. Flo's hand at 3,000, you got to be like, ah, oh, goddamn, my back feel funny. <laughs> my back, <laughs> why it feel like that? You know, but now you got 15,000. You have to be able to deal with that risk. You have to be able to embrace it, become comfortable with it, and then you have to be able to seek it, become hungry for it. Because here's the funny thing. When I gave out these opportunities, hey, there's a business you could do. Hey, here's a product. It, there was always competition for it, but there was never enough competition. Every time I put it out within, within an hour, some, hey, quit, here's the money. Let's get going. For sure. But there wasn't enough competition considering the reality of what the opportunity really was. He put up 3000 got back 15000 It's a no-brainer. There wasn't enough competition. Why? Because of this part, the risk. People were scared. When I say test those relationships, if I was you and Quest says, hey, it's an opportunity, $3,000, you'll make $15,000. Follow these directions. I'm like, I can follow directions. I trust them, and I'm willing to put up the capital, but I ain't got the capital. Hey, mom, uh, shit, um, look, uh, you, you got $3,000 on you? No, how much you got on it? $500? God damn, you ain't got more than $500. Come on, you, you at least got $700. Come on now. Okay, cool. Click. Big Brody. Big bro. Um, I need 3,000. How much you got on it? Nigga, I'm trying to make an investment. Uh, I got you, bro. I'm gonna get this back to you. How much you got on it? 300. Nigga, didn't I see you on Instagram buying some new shoes? You got more than 300. It's the first. Didn't you just get paid? Okay, cool. You got 300. Can you do 400? You can do four. Can you do 450? 450 going once, going twice, going three. Okay, you do 450. Fantastic. Okay. Boom. Hey, baby, how you doing? Yeah, what you trying to do this weekend? Where? Yeah, let's go somewhere. I miss you. That's what's up. You got three thousand dollars? Oh, you do. You do have three thousand. That's great. Um, well, I'm gonna need that from you. Can you get that to me today? Word. Fantastic. Click. Just because I'm the kind of person I am, I don't trust shit. She might be bullshitting. Call another. Hey, baby, how you doing? Yeah, I was just thinking about you. That's why I called you. Yeah, you're just thinking about me. What are you thinking about? You nasty as hell. Anyways, um, uh, you got three thousand dollars. What do you mean? While I'm asking you for money, cause I need it. That's why I'm asking for money. I'm trying to do this investment. There's a good business opportunity. You know, I've been trying to become an entrepreneur. This is my opportunity right now, and I just need the three thousand. I'm very confident that I can get this done. Will you work with me? You don't trust me. You find out who she is, like really quickly. Like all of a sudden, it's like you never knew her. It's like, damn, bitch, I knew you for five years. I asked you for a solid. It's like I'm a stranger now. It's like I knew you for five years. You think I'm going to do you dirty? During this five years, you didn't get to know me? Is it me that's the problem or is it actually you? Is it me that, that's the problem or is it actually you? Like, do you not trust me because of me or do you not trust me because of you? That might be a them problem, right? It often is. But you got to test those relationships. And when you get the opportunity, God damn it, you better take it. Because here's the funny thing. You don't walk down the street and it's a bunch of like random ass dudes who's like, hey, I'm not related to you by blood. We're not cousins or anything. But I took out the time to create a design that I know is good. I have a ready made audience that wants to buy it. And I've already vetted the manufacturers for some unexplainable reason. I'd like to give you an opportunity to make $13,000 instead of me doing it. That does not happen. You fucking skip over that. You're dumb or you're not ambitious. Both are problems. Come on now. This is real life out here. Now, excitement, risk, health, and life. I remember I went down to Nairobi and I was like, well, what's the coolest stuff here? They have this refined African accent. Well, this is the guy at the front desk in the hotel. Well, you know, the tourists, they always do this, and they go and see this, and they the Jomo Kenyatta Memorial, they go here, and also they go here, and that's mostly what you would do if you were a Western tourist. I was like, okay, well, what would you do if you are a Kenyan tourist? Like, if I came from a different part of Kenya, 
Well, if you were a Kenyan tourist and perhaps you spoke a native language and, of course, you looked Kenyan, then you would probably want to go to the marketplace. It is the largest market in, in this side of Africa, and Africa is a massive continent, so trust me, it's quite large. But it is not safe for a tourist to go to. Why is that? Well, they would look at you and they could tell that you're not Kenyan. And once they can tell that you're not Kenyan, then they might presume that you might have some shillings on you. And if you have some shillings on you, they might need those shillings. So it could get rough. Okay. Sounds like, sounds interesting. Though. Sounds like, yeah, it's it's huge bustling market, all types of uh, merchants. It's, it, it is really an experience. You know, I, I've been there once before. I don't go back very much, but I've been there. Yes. You're just moving too much. You're going in and out of the light. Oh, in and out of the light? Yeah. Stay in the light. Stay in the light. Great. So, you know what? Uh, I, I don't recommend it. Maybe, you know, you can go and Google it it's, and see it. It's, it's not the same, but you can see what I mean. So anyways, I was like, you know what? I, I think I'll go. You know, I know this guy named Nelson, and, and Nelson is the plug. So I was like, you know, I'll go. You know, I'm willing to risk health and life because, you know, it's it's those those rare opportunities. It's those things that you do that no one else is willing to do. It's kind of like Frank Lucas in American Gangster. He went way over to Vietnam to meet the plug, not the fake plug, not plies, you know, like the real plug where you really get it cooked up raw. And then in doing that, he was able to have a better business than anybody because he was willing to do what other people wouldn't do. Other people like him would not do. So I said, fantastic. Yeah, we can get this done. I know I'm going into a place that's unsafe, so I will take some precaution, precaution, pre, precautions, and uh, and I'm still wearing my jewelry, bitch. <laughs> hey, bring the AKs. I want to wear my jewelry, goddamn it. Stay close. Pay attention. Um, and so I did, and I want to show, uh, say that to say this. Oh wait, I missed something. Um, so that was in Kenya. Here's a map of Eritrea. Eritrea is. Uh, a country, little known country, that is very much so blocked off from international influence, international investment, certainly Western influence and investment. It has a coastline, which means that there are beaches there and beachfront property is very valuable. It's, excuse me, it's very hard to get a, a visa as an American or as a Westerner, which means that they have blocked out investment opportunity. But things change. Like, you've lived in Vegas for how long? Seven years. You've seen Vegas change a lot, right? Right. So the house that I own today, if I would have bought it seven years ago, it would have probably been a lot cheaper, right? Yeah, it had been a lot cheaper. My house was so much cheaper if I would have bought it seven years ago. Say I would have bought it seven years ago and then sold it now, I would have made a tremendous amount of money. Because I would have came to Vegas before Vegas was super, super popping, Right? It's like Mykonos. You only start hearing about Mykonos in the last couple of years, right? The last couple of years is super cracking. So if you have a property there and you rent it out, you're going to make a lot of money. But you would have ideally wanted to buy the property before it became known as Mykonos or Ibiza or what's the place in Mexico? Tulum. Yeah, before it became so popular. Now, you have a place that's filled with gorgeous women. It has coastline. It's been blocking out investment. So you have beachfront property that's underdeveloped. It is in a sea where most of the major goods uh, in the, on the planet Earth are transported, a very important passageway. This, this is an important place to be. In fact, there's a small country above called Djibouti, which uh, takes a... Uh, are you, you from Djibouti? Oh, south. south. Thank you. I appreciate you, boss. Uh, there's Djibouti. Your geography is amazing. Shout out to you. Um, Djibouti is a small country that takes a billion dollars in goods from Ethiopia. They, they get a billion dollars just in duties and taxes and letting Ethiopia send their goods through because access to this water is hugely important for a variety of reasons. So there's important military installations in Djibouti. There's an undeveloped tourism market. There's an underdeveloped real estate market. There's so many interesting things there. And most people haven't heard of the country. I'm like, huh, I think this sounds like an opportunity. And, and you know, opportunities, uh, this is how you know it's an opportunity. For example, I wrote, anyone have real connections in Eritrea? I need a visa. The government's not giving uh, visas to Americans. This comment right here I think is fascinating because this is uh, what we often see. Quote, 
They not given. <laughs> Try this again. They not given visas to Americans, yet you still trying to go there. Two question marks, even though only one's necessary. But hey, they not given visas to Americans, yet you still trying to go there. Don't do it, bro. It's just not worth it. Well, here's a question. Do any of you think this guy's been to Eritrea? No. Do any of you think this guy's been to maybe Ethiopia, which is easy to get into? No. You think he's been to Djibouti, which is reasonably easy to get into, expensive, but easy to get into? You think he's been to East Africa? You think he's been to Africa? But he's telling me what to do. He's advising me. Is he advising me possibly on something he knows nothing about? He don't know anything about it. But he's advising me. That's amazing. He might have just stolen an opportunity from me. I go to Eritrea, buy up some land for $20,000, acres on that coastline. Just hold on to it for a couple years. Next thing you know, Shell might open up something. American military might open up a base there. Something might change. Now they need my land. But they got to pay for it. They ain't going to pay what I pay for it. $20,000? I could spare $20,000. I've misplaced $20,000 before. Forgot what I did with it. I found it, but I forgot what I did with it. You see what I'm saying? So you're telling me it's not worth me going there and putting down a little bit of money that's nothing to me, but can get me fill in the blank number of acres coastline that I know is going to be developed at some point soon within the next 10 years and it's going to give me a better return than real estate? And if it doesn't, Worst case scenario, I show up there, give them 50000 build a house from fucking scratch on the water? Who the fuck are you? You don't even know anything. You ain't even been to Africa. The whole continent, you ain't been nowhere on it. You don't make investments. You don't figure out what's happening next. I'm trying to figure out what's happening next. You'd be dumb to go buy property in Mykonos, Tulum, Ibiza. It's too late. You'd be dumb to buy property in Las Vegas. It's too late. They ain't already built that big ass sphere. I don't even know what the hell that does. They already built it. They already built the Raiders Stadium. I was the first house in my neighborhood. I don't know if you guys know, but my house was there. No other houses were there. Being that I had the first house there, when the other houses come, it increases my property value. The guy who got the first house, the smart guy, the guy who got the last house, got the most expensive one. Be first. Or be on what's next. Or buy it after it's going down when you know it's coming back up. And don't listen to these people. They're not giving visas to Americans. Are you still trying to go there? Don't do it, bro. It's just not worth it. Worth it? Do you know what it's worth? You don't have no idea what it's worth. Bro, watching me crying right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then put two question marks talking about they not giving visas. That's crazy. Only reason he knew that because I said that. I can understand the nigga was an expert or some shit. Like, no, actually, I'm aware. They, the embassy there is not granting. Like, he doesn't even know. That's the crazy part. And then it has 10 likes. Yeah, why I got 10 likes? Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. That's crazy, right? <laughs> it has 10 likes because fear rules. They don't have a clue. Sounds right. Yeah. Sounds right. And fear is such an easy thing. Fear is so common. Everyone can relate to fear. Remember, it's lonely at the top. People can't relate to success. They ain't experienced that. They can relate to fear. They've experienced that. They can relate to that. Can't relate to success. Can't relate to what it takes to get success. Can't relate to taking risks. Yes, there's a risk. That's why you get more money, because there's more risk. Come on now. This, this, I remember, listen, before I even do that, what did they say uh, when we were in Brazil? We were in, uh, where were we? 
Sao Paulo. We're in Sao Paulo, which is, is that the capital? It's the financial I, hub. Yeah. I, Whatever. Yeah. But we're in Sao Paulo. I'm asking Brazilians, hey, I think I want to go down to Rio. What do they all say? It's dangerous. It's so dangerous. Don't go to Rio. They'll rob you. Oh, that pretty chain. They'll take it. They'll rob you. Every Monolithically, we get to the airport, see this blonde white girl. Hey, where are you going? I don't even remember where she was going. Some small town. Yeah, some yeah. small town. She's like, where are you going? I was like, Rio. She's like, oh, you're going to love it. It's different. Oh, you're going to love it. Why? Why would I love it? It's dangerous. Aren't I going to get killed and robbed immediately? Oh, no, you're going to love it. It's beautiful. Great beaches, friendly people. Here's the difference. The Brazilians we were talking about, they're Brazilian. So you're like, oh, you should know. But they never been there. They were Brazilians who live in Sao Paulo. They never been to Rio. They were telling you what they heard. What they heard. Not what they know. What they heard. Human beings are good as hell at repeating things that are not true. The white girl's been to Rio. Blonde, blue-eyed white girl in Rio. She doesn't look like nobody there. If there ever was a target, she's the one. Like, if I was robbing, I'd rob her. Seem like a good person to rob. You got the bread. Uh, you don't speak Portuguese. Uh, yeah, oh, and you're not strong enough to defend yourself. I'm robbing you for sure. That's what we call a lick. That's easy. But no, had no problems at all. Because she, she actually been there. You can get advice from someone who knows instead of someone who has not the foggiest idea. All they know is fear. Fear is their God. Uh, before I go on to this next one, go ahead. First, if you can already, try to read quickly, that'd be we great. We already acknowledge Ken with the $50. But you can give him a baller alert in person because he's not here. Word. Okay. Is he, is he no, right he's here? right here on the couch. Oh. It's pronounced Kene, right? Yeah, but his he used on Cash App. He uses Ken, so I just okay, wanted to right, okay, not right. give I thought out his I thought it was somebody name. else. I was like, no, Kene. Okay, peace to the saints. Appreciate you, absolutely. We have Jay said, "Peace to the saints." How would you turn a monogamous relationship into a polygamous one? Oh boy, Extremely yeah. jealous woman, or I want French fries without her caring. I am that guy in every way, and I deserve it. She's a good one. My, my, I love read that again. I enjoyed that. How enjoyed would you turn it. a monogamous relationship into a polygamous one? Hold it. How do you turn a monogamous relationship into a polygamous one? You might be thinking that's foul, but low key, it's not foul. That that's kind of on the on the way there. So that's that's actually more reasonable than you would think. Okay, cool. Extremely it's funny, but it's reasonable. Go ahead. Extremely jealous woman. Ah, ah, polygamous. That means that you need to be treating them with some reasonable level of equity. Like you're, you're not talking about a main girl with side pieces. You're talking about main women. So when you say extremely jealous, just jealous by itself is enough to wreck this whole program. You said extremely jealous. Ah, that's not going to work, my boy. It's not going to work, but keep going. Or I want French fries without her caring. Oh, no, they're, they all care. Even the ones who are with it, who are like not with it, but uh, will accept it. They all care. Of course, they love you. Of course, they care. I am that guy in every way, and I deserve it. <laughs> I like that. Here, 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 here. And then she's a good one. Okay, very good. Yeah, if she's a good one. So I'd make my calculation. If this is something that you must have, and he's really getting into that uh, risk the relationship piece we was talking about earlier, right? He's trying to live like a pharaoh. It's a beautiful thing. So I would say to myself, okay, um, the po if you plan to actually be polygynous, rightly polygynous, have two main women or two wives or three wives or three main women, however you'd like to term it, three real relationships, and she's extremely jealous, this is not going to work. So you know that there's a time limit on this relationship. It's going to expire. If you actually are in, see, that's greater than sex. Those are three relationships. If you just want to get your meat wet every now and then, you hear me get some barbecue sauce on your ribs, then um, you got, you want some side pieces. Well, she doesn't really need to know about that. And it sounds like she can't handle the truth. So you already know you about to be creeping and you need to calculate, okay, when she busts me, not if, but when, and, and when might be 13 years down the line, might be 20 years down the line, but it's going to happen. <laughs> okay. Like nobody's that good. No <laughs> one's that good. You know, it might take 20, 30 years, but it's going to happen. No one's that good. You have to calculate now, is she the woman that's going to destroy our whole relationship and try to destroy my whole life? What will her reaction be when she finds out? If her, re her reaction is nuclear, then it's just not worth it unless you are willing to end the relationship and risk all of your capital. 
So these are the things you should ask yourself. But long story short, polygyny is off the table. And then secondly, figure out, is she going to you know, be nuclear when she finds out? And remember that there's other women out there who, uh, you know, they'll be down with the program. Organized Truth said, peace to the saints. If you want to be better, you have to be different. To be average mm. is to be like everyone else. Mm. Being alienated is a sign you're not average. Mm. Lions are weird to sheep. Ooh, I think, did he mean that the other way around? Like, oh yeah, lions are weird to sheep. I get it. Okay, man, that okay. boy getting deep. Major Go Mind ahead. and Soul said, just got my prayer in for the day. Dripping in holy water. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. That's a natural brother right there. Major Mind and Soul is a very fitting name for the brother with the afro. On... PayPal, we have none of the above said trying to keep this session alive helps me start my work week with the right mindset. Hashtag contribution into the collection plate. In a, in a real way. We also on PayPal have Amir says peace to the saints. Thank you for the Sunday service saint. Shout out to all the saints in the live audience. Yes, indeed. Shout out to the real ones. On and, and th this is family right here. Like this is, no, this is what colors your life, the people you spend your life with. This is what matters. Internet stuff, please, it's not real. On Cash Up, we have St. Keith's Intuition. Peace to the Saints. Melvin said, thanks for creating the leaders of tomorrow. Indeed. Hustino said, peace to the Saints. I dig the suit top. Ready for the lessons. <laughs> bro said the suit top. <laughs> like, bro, you gave me half the suit, but it's cool. Justin, okay. this is the Justin that makes the clips, said, peace to the Saints. Beautiful production and lecture. Appreciate it. Shout out to Justin. Irvin, who's had a chance to come here in person, said, peace to the Saints. Thanks for all the game. And Irvin's going to be on the, the Vietnam trip. So it's going to, yeah. Solomon said, ties for the sermon. Preach on. So yes, sir. Nika Ragua Saint said, peace to the Saints. Looking sharp. <laughs> Shout out to Nika Ragua Saint. <laughs> <laughs> Broke that up by syllables, right? <laughs> because you, we have Gio said, who just got? got the watch, my guy, St. Flo's. Mm -hmm. Peace to the Saints, my brother. Oh, who, who got the watch? Uh, Geo. Geo, shout out to Geo. See, and the watch looks nice on camera money. right now. He he got he just got it right right now, or he already had it. He sent it the super or okay. the cash up saying I just got it. They, as I said, the man's making money. It's it's smart business. We have Jay sent tuition. Shout out to Jay. And Austin sent tuition as well. Shout out to the young man. Carry on. So Asmara, right? Excuse me, uh, Eritrea. Boom. That's a that's a beach in Eritrea. Doesn't that look nice? Yeah, like that's what that's when they're talking about the clear water. That's what they're talking about. That blue water. That's what they're talking about. Boy, that'd look real nice to have you a house right there or a resort or some Airbnbs. That'd look real good, wouldn't it? And then you know the cost of labor is very low. Thinking like $2 an hour. Man, you had that thing staffed out. You hear me? Yeah, you have that thing staffed out. You have so many damn staff members on there. Have a couple of your partners from America come through, a couple of your partners from the Middle East, a couple of your partners from Europe. They got the bread. $300 a night. No problem. That's a deal, Marquette. Oh, and trust me, I got the amenities. You sending bad bees in there. You heard me? Bad. Is there anything I can get you, sir? Speaking good English. Is there anything I can get you, sir? No? Okay, I'll be sitting outside on your porch till you need something. And we could pay them to do that. They're making only $2 an hour. You think I'm exaggerating when I say $2 an hour. You dig what I'm saying? Man, look at this water. And I actually screenshot it, the whole thing, not only the picture, but I want you guys to see this. Masawa, Eritrea's forgotten city and beaches by the Red Sea. Forgotten. Undeveloped. Which means the price got to be good. It's not even polluted. There's nobody there. Eritrea has a low population. And you saying don't go. What you know? You don't know a damn thing, man. There's another beach in Eritrea. Still not very populated. Clean enough for people to be in it. This is the kind of stuff these Instagram thoughts like, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Instagram thoughts love stuff like this. You got one right yeah, this look like a local though. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, I can see the poverty in her, but um, <laughs> but, but check this out though. Um, to arrange this whole thing, what that cost me like ten dollars, cause that's his camel. That's his camel. I give him ten dollars and ten dollars worth of his local currency. Man, he do that all day for me. He do that all day for me. And an American thought. What will she pay to ride this camel on this beach and then have us take a picture for her IG? Oh, she'd be 20. 20. I think she'd give me 70. Ooh. 
But if she gave me 20, I would still be profitable. Right? I would still be profitable. Because I'm going to do it at least five or 10 times that day. Right? Yeah. But I think I could get 70 out of her. I think I could. Yeah. And if her man is there, we could get more. Right? We, we can figure this out. But the point is, if she even gave me 20, which is nearly nothing, and he'll do it all day for $10, and I can get five of her, that's 100 bucks. And my input cost is 10 bucks, 20 bucks top. I'm making money there on a, on a little camel ride, which is just a part of my whole little thing that I set up, which is all easy to do because the cost of labor is so low. And this will be fun, too, because I'm still living on the beach in a country surrounded by gorgeous women. I don't mind doing that. I might even go to a beach town with gorgeous women for free. Might even. Excitement. Meet new people. Do new things. There's a woman I know in uh, high up at Caesars Palace. She was like, hey, um, we got an event at the villa. Wait, do, does anyone know who this is? JB Smooth. Smooth. You're good. I didn't even know. She was like, hey, JB Smooth is having like a private screening for his HBO show. And I was like, uh, who's JB Smooth? <laughs> she was like, have you seen the Caesars advertisements? He's the guy on them. I was like, okay. You're like, but who is he though? Like, who is that? Who's he? What's the show? She was like, curb your enthusiasm. I was like, I heard of that. Like, do black people watch that show? Like, is a black guy on that show? What is that? Do you guys watch that? Oh, what the hell that is yeah but you know yeah you don't watch the show you know him. he's a famous guy right he's a comedian right i i didn't even know i didn't even know but you know people are always talking about meeting new people but they forget that you meet new people by doing new things activities it's your activities it's where are you it's the places the places and the position so even though i didn't know who jb smooth was i've never watched curb your enthusiasm I thought it was probably a dumb show, but I was like, if he has a whole villain, he's doing a private screening with his wife and his family members, and I could slide in there, that's really intimate. Intimate enough to where if I meet him in this environment and I see him again, he'll for sure remember me, and that's helpful to my ends. So yeah, for sure, I'll go. Boom, here I am. Oh. Turns out the only black people there was his family and me, right? <laughs> so it's like JB Smooth, his wife, and like two of his cousins, and then me, which made it even, it's like very few times in life being black is an advantage. <laughs> but it was like like 20 white people, it's like, hey, hey, black guy, what are you doing? How'd you get in here? Who do you know? Right? You, you know somebody. You wouldn't be in here for sure. <laughs> so, you know, boom, there you go. And improve the network. And here's the funny thing. When you really understand business and marketing, now, Grant, this was actually an intimate environment and all that good stuff, but this could have been a random photo op. You post that photo up, you get enough photos like these, it's going to open up other doors to you. You know how business is. Mm -hmm. It's going to open up other doors. You know, say you reach out to an agent in LA and say, hey, man, I, you know, I want to get on your portfolio. I, I want to get into acting and blah, 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 blah. Hey, here's my IG. And he looks at your IG and you're on your IG with like eight different famous people. That's going to get you, that's going to get you to the next step. It's going to help. These are all things you should be uh, asking yourself. The successful life is the exciting life. It's actually the same same thing. An exciting life and a successful life, they're the same thing if you can stomach risk. If you can become comfortable with other pe what other people call risk and fear, then you have the good life. How do you actually become comfortable with risk? This one sentence does it for me. Never give too much weight, too much weight, heaviness to any one moment, one thing you're doing, or any one person. What do I mean by that? I'm doing this Vietnam trip. Tremendous amounts of ways it could go wrong. My flight could get delayed. Imagine everybody shows up and I'm not there. People, the vendors could cheat me. The hotels could close down. The weather systems could be bad. There's a, Vietnam might not grant visas. They might see this many Americans coming at once and think there's something going on. There's an infinite number of things that could go wrong. But it doesn't bother me because it's just one moment in a life of meaning. It's just one moment of many moments. So if this one thing goes bad, it won't ruin me. The challenge is when we start looking at one moment like it's all the moments. We look at one moment like it's, it shapes our whole life or it impacts our whole life. If this went totally wrong, I can recover from it. And sometimes we give one person too much weight. My wife left me. I don't know what I'm going to do. 
<laughs> you taking all my shit. <laughs> or you got these nuts, man. There's a true story. I, I saw on Instagram it was a dude in um, Qatar. His uh, girl left him. And it's him on the on TikTok live driving his car into a mall. <laughs> yeah. Went through the first door. I was like, damn, his shit, he got it. What kind of car is that? <laughs> his windshield ain't cracker, nothing. What kind of car is that? And Apple doesn't operate in some uh, country. So I don't know if it was an Apple store, or like a fake one, but he kept driving. The nigga that made it through the front doors. People like, God damn, bro. Like, you know, it, the mall's going. It's like during business hours. And he drove through the front doors of the mall. His windshield's still intact. I'm like, that's amazing. You see little kids and women like, I didn't think tripping. Then he just keeps driving straight and drives through what appeared to be like similar to an Apple store. Then that windshield broke. But I was like, bro, for real, my boy? Over one broad? Like, good Lord. Like, here's the challenge. Uh, your heart was broken. Ah, it's going to get broken again. <laughs> As it turns out that's how life is, right? Like, yeah, she broke it. You said what? That windshield was amazing, right? That would be a good commercial, huh? <laughs> Your heart might break, but our windshields never will. <laughs> Three ninety nine windshield protects. Like, yeah, that was crazy, bro. So the point is, he gave too much weight to one person. Like one person could ruin his whole life, or one person could make things no good. Just like nothing is good after this one person. It's like, bro, get out of here. Number one, your heart got broke. Fantastic, it's gonna get broken again. People are gonna disappoint you. People are gonna die. People are gonna abandon you. People are going to do this and do that. People are going to be replaced. That girl who broke your heart, she might have been like an eight, and that was the best girl you ever had. Next one might come along, might be a 10. Might be a 10 and like you more than the last one. You don't know. But you should find out instead of trying to kill yourself, right? So I never give too much meaning or weight to one event or one person because it's just one data point in a whole full life of meaningful things. But here's the key. If you're not trying to have an exciting life, you're not creating opportunities and situations, that's why that one woman in that one uh, moment has so much meaning. Because you don't have anything else. You ain't got nothing else. When you got a lot of things on that calendar, that's the key. Ah, risk mentality. Winners, they're asking themselves, what can I win? That's, that's all they're on. Losers, I don't know if I can do that. What will I lose? These are the two questions driving each mentality. The winner is always oriented on, I'm going to decide if I'm going to do this on what I can win. Maybe even you tell me what I can win is not enough for, for me. It's not enough. I'm not going to do it because it's not enough to win. Not because of what I might lose, just because it's not enough to win to excite me. But I'm a winner. I'm always thinking about what can I win. Losers are always calculating based on, what will I lose if I do that? What will I lose? They're always oriented on the negative side, on the bad side, on the suffering. Just like when I made that post, I said, hey, I need to get to Eritrea. I wasn't asking what's the risk. I said, who can get me a plug with the visa? Decision is made. Decision's made. Why are you trying to make a risk calculation and a fear calculation for me? You being fearful on my behalf? Because they're a fearful person. That's loser mentality. What will I lose if I do this? What will, what will you lose if you do this? You ask a loser, they're going to tell you the thoughts of a loser. Yes? On that topic. Uh, uh, grab, that, grab that mic right there. Thank you for that. Yeah, on that topic of um, somebody talking about how dangerous Brazil is, I was in the London airport last week at this exact time, uh -huh. or, and, and somebody said, Oh, well, there was this woman who sat with a, a small bag, a, uh, like right under her neck, a, a small crossbody bag. Uh -huh. And she sat down in one place and on the bus. And by the time she got up, she had already been pickpocketed out of the bag under her neck. Damn. You might not want to go there. You might need to be careful. Right. I've, I've never experienced, well, I haven't been there yet, but right. I don't think I'm going to experience anything like that. You being six foot three black guy is just, shit is different, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> it There's a like, little white lady here. I'm like, you don't need that. Uh, black guy, <laughs> six three. Uh, you know what, man? <laughs> yeah, just, things be different. Nah, I feel you. But it's crazy how they take one bad story and that's the whole story, right? Yeah, they take one bad chapter and now it's the whole story. You caught up? Fantastic. I'm not caught up. Oh, you're not caught up. No. Okay, go ahead. 
Okay, we have Felix said, Saint, thank you so much for taking the time to share your knowledge and expertise with us. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. We have Limitless Aspirations sent $50. Baller alert. Said, Peace to the Saints. The production quality is amazing. Keep up the good work. Tuition for the offering plate. Yeah, Jabrizi, I got to get with you on this camera, man. That joint. I had to quit spending money on cameras. They'd be too complex. Okay, we have <laughs> Jonathan said, I'm with the investing to Eritrea. See? He came right back and said, definitely will be once I get this bread up. Right. Aaron says, peace to the saints, tuition for the valuable Sunday education. And let me speak to business real quick, because a hustler, man, winners win, losers lose, haters hate, hustlers hustle. I don't get mad at haters because they just doing their job. And I'm a money getter. My job is to get this money. I ain't going to distract them from their job. I got to do my job, in fact, for them to do their job. I got to get this money so they got something to hate on. If I don't do my job, they can't do their job. You feel know I me? Mean? So real talk. But imagine this. You're in a situation wherein it's very difficult to get a visa in Eritrea, right? Say you're Eritrean and you figure it out how to get visas for Americans. That's a service. You could charge me money for that. If it costs, say, $50 to process the visa, and no one else knows how to get a visa, you can now charge $300 for a service. There's just so many ways to make this money if you, if you are thinking about it. See, the problem is people ain't thinking about it. I kid you not, when I was on my way here, um, I was taking the streets because, as I said, I try not to take the freeway unless I'm in the zone. Uh, and I pulled up behind a Lamborghini. It was black on black, and I was observing it because I'm getting one of my cars wrapped, and so I was noticing that their car had been dechromed. So I'm like kind of looking to see what that style looks like. Because I, I usually like chrome because a lot of antique cars, are, they're very chrome heavy before it was like illegal to have chrome bumpers. So I'm looking at this car and I see that it's been dechromed. I see the license plate and the license plate says winners win on the Lamborghini. I was like, I love it. I absolutely love it. Winners win. That's right. And you would see that on a Lamborghini. It makes perfect sense. You usually don't see plates like that on like a piece of shit. <laughs> now, because on a piece of shit, they want to put other things like, um, you know, Persian princess or like just like some like dumb, irrelevant thing. And the reason I bring that up is because I often look at how people allocate capital, uh, which is to say, you know, I, I was driving by an apartment and I saw that like this like elaborate like blow up of a Santa Claus. And I was just kind of like, huh. If I lived in an apartment like that, I probably wouldn't be spending money on a Santa Claus blow up. And then I was asking myself, if you paid for that Santa Claus blow up every year for, say, 10 years and there's like 60 bucks, that's $600. I could do something with $600. And then I asked myself as a smart man thinking like a wealthy man, how much money would I save not being silly like you? So if I was a poor person in a poor apartment, and this was a bit of a you know, more downtrodden apartment building. I was like, if I was a poor person in a poor apartment, which I have been, that's what I was born into. I'd say, okay, so you go out on Friday and you drink alcohol. I skip that and save the money. When Christmas comes around, you put up Christmas lights. I, I skip that and save the money. You put up this blow up Santa Claus. I skip that and save the money. And then when Halloween comes, you put up Halloween decorations. I skip that and save the money. And when Valentine's day came, you bought your girl all this chocolates and flowers and i skipped that and saved the money i still had just as much happiness and joy as you guys did i just did it at other people's expense not my own uh you know i went to my grandma's house or you know took my girl out to a picnic or whatever the case was i got it done but i, I didn't spend on the foolish unnecessary things and it's the capital allocation that keeps poor people poor you know when i skip out all these bullshit ass holidays and these lights and these decorations that do nothing at all for me Damn, I didn't just add it two, three thousand dollars to my annual income because I didn't go to the club at all. I was still smashing broads. I just didn't have the club as a part of my flow. It's the cal capital allocation is critical. No one in America is poor because they have to be. Might sound crazy. They're poor because they want to be. I mean, just say the truth. They poor because they want to be. Like oh, bro. And even if you want to talk about gold diggers, right? Gold diggers, kid you not, if I would lined up 100 women, we couldn't even find 20 quality gold diggers. We couldn't. <laughs> we, we really couldn't. We couldn't find 20 quality gold diggers. We could, And I know. And you know, because you got the thing, you got the gold. <laughs> you, and I done put up on a lot of chicks that need, they look like they need some gold. They weren't trying to dig. Can't even find 20 gold diggers. Most people don't want money. Most people don't want great success. Most people are comfortable being right where they are. 
which is to say the top is lonely. It's wide open if you'd like to go. Just like Eritrea, it's wide open if you can get in. Real estate market, wide open if you can be a pioneer there. Everybody else is doing what the crowd is doing right now. Oh, I'm going to buy some property in Mexico in Tulum. I'm going to buy a villa in Mykonos. No, and that's great. I'm not saying I wouldn't do those things, but I wouldn't do it for investment purposes. To make money, I would do it just for pure joy. But most of the people babbling, they don't have money. They need to make money. So why don't they want to do any of these things? Because losers lose. They're always calculating on what will go wrong. That's their only calculation. Oh, Marquette, you shouldn't go. They ain't giving visas. Leadership. I want to speak uh, on leadership because I know a lot of folks on YouTube are introverts. Increasingly, we have introverts because people claim that they have social anxiety. anxiety, which I'm not sure is a real thing. I'm not sure. Maybe it is. Maybe it's something you develop, right? But I tend to think that, like, if you don't curl, your bicep becomes weak, right? Yeah. So if you don't socialize, your social skills become weak. And then they call it social anxiety to make it seem like it's not their fault, right? It's a sickness I have. It's not just a lack of practice. Okay, buddy. Anyway, so a lot of folks are introverts. They're used to being alone, in other words. If you want to be a leader, uh, being alone is not very effective for leadership. You actually have to be proximate and establish presence with those you would have follow you. All of you guys are training to be leaders. You have a soccer club. You're not going to be a great coach unless you show up. You know, you could coach remotely. You could coach on the Internet. You could coach through videos. But there's a highly different level of allegiance to you as the leader that people have when they can see you and touch you and shake your hands. So this is why I know for sure, like the young man who came yesterday, shook his hand. I know who he is. Showed him something he hasn't seen before. Took him to a good restaurant. Gave him some words of encouragement. One guy like that, he's going to stick with me. If I have one fan like that, that's as good as 20 fans. If I was a, a Kevin Samuels or I guess I use someone a lot because he's irrelevant now. Just by, by the way, side note, folks, like people who are dead, they're irrelevant. I don't say that to be mean. I just say that because I want you guys to be rational. Uh, who's alive that matters in the Internet space? Tate. Tate. Right. Great. So that guy I just met is better than having 20 fans. Like, so Say Tate is like 20 times more famous than I am, right? Me having one guy whose hand I've shaken is more, he's more powerful of a follower than Tate having 20 fans to my one whose hand he has not shaken. Do you understand the difference? Mm -hmm. And also when you're talking about relationships, relationships matter most when you can pull something out of it. I've shaken the man's hand, I can probably pull something out of that relationship and for him he can pull something out of the relationship. Always think about how do you get the most impact out of your time and out of your effort and out of your relationships. I hear people all the time say, Mark, I don't have a lot of friends. Good. Fantastic. Dive deep into the friendships you do have. Dive deep. I'm happy when I don't have a lot of friendships because I don't have time to respond to a bunch of texts or buy a bunch of gifts on holidays. If I have three friends, great. I can manage going to get three gifts for people I really care about. When I call and ask for something, they'll give it to me out of true, sincere love and affection. So think about that. And remember, even if you're an introvert, you still have to make the effort to engage proximity, let people know you're close enough. Because when you're not close, who is a problem? Whether it's an enemy or a friend, they need to know that you're close, close enough to do something for them or to do something against them. Whether it's a friend or an enemy, they got to know that you're close. That's why I tell these bros, I'm everywhere like air. I'm in every place like space. I am the boogeyman. I can find you. I can come get you if I need to, for, for good or for ill. I'm everywhere. Believe it. Proximity and presence, even though I'm an introvert and I really don't want to be anywhere or go anywhere. But the key is that I understand the presence piece. So if you have a birthday party and I really don't want to be around a bunch of people, I will show up. I'll just only stay 20 minutes. But during that 20 minutes, hey, how you doing? Mark Webb Burton. What's your name? Martin. Martin, pleasure to meet you. Absolutely. Hey. Hey, did I see you at the gym? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're a boxer. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Nice to meet you. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Boom. I'm going to meet everybody. 20 minutes. You'd have thought the nigga was in there the whole day. Like, he, this man met everybody. And you'll know because they'll be like, hey, did you meet that one dude with the crazy ass suit on? You meet that dude with the, the really colorful shirt? Yeah, I met that guy. Oh, he's a nice guy. And I met everyone, so everyone has a reference point. My 20 minutes was like three hours because I was moving and grooving in that mug and got up out of there too. And just as I was telling you earlier how poor people allocate capital, 
they also misallocate time. So I went in there, did 20 minutes like I was at work. You heard me? I was not in there socializing. I was in there working. Did my 20 minutes, got up out of there. I'm going to sleep on time. I'm waking up on time. Another dummy, low-income, uh, poverty mindset. He's in there, spends four hours, gets lizard, oversleeps, misses half his day bad time allocation and then didn't meet everybody because he wasn't thinking he went in there like oh man it's the homie bro what up i see you in a minute yeah bro you just got out you fresh out bro what you been up to so he he kicking it with brody right here right didn't <laughs> didn't meet anybody else new already knew this guy and bro fresh out damn you might want to meet somebody that's not fresh out you feel me like because he gonna need a solid you know what i'm saying he just did 10 years in the box he gonna need a solid. So you want to move around, meet everybody. You want to allocate that time and that capital effectively. And I'm always asking myself how to do that. Oh my, oh my. Consumer versus producer mindset triggers. I'm winding down here, folks. Work with me. I know this is like a black church right now. Um, <laughs> mindset triggers. As, you should always think of yourself as a leader. A leader is a producer. Always think of yourself as a leader. A leader is a producer. When you're thinking of yourself as a producer and never as a consumer, we all must consume, but you don't think of yourself as a consumer. So when I receive an email trying to sell me stuff, like Gucci, you, you probably get Balenciaga emails, like wherever you bought designer at, they'll email you from time to time. Sometimes they'll text you, like a, a specific woman will text you. Hey, hey, Corey, how you doing? Like, you know, we just got in our new collection. You're like, ah, damn, this is, this is too personal. Jesus Christ. It's an actual person, right? Every time I get one of these outreaches, thinking as a producer, I say, oh, damn. It's a trigger for me to remember, who have I reached out today to sell a product to? Who have I reminded of my product offering today? Why did Gucci email me at 2.30 p.m. on Monday? Is that the right time to reach to the customer to where they actually read emails? Because I got an email from Gucci, Hermes, and Valentino within the same hour on the same day. Maybe this is the peak time to send out these kind of emails. And I don't have the budget they have to do the research and development and find out when the best marketing window is. Maybe this is it. They've triggered me. They sent me something to sell me something, but I'm not a consumer. I'm a producer. Something like a producer. I got to do what they're doing. Damn, I need to send out some emails. I need to post some offerings. I need to offer some product to somebody. It's a trigger. And it reminds you that this world is still spinning. Are you the one on there getting dizzy and shit? Or are you the one that's spinning this motherfucker? You feel me? Like, I'm trying to be the one spinning this motherfucker instead of being on there getting dizzy, about to throw up. You don't know what's going on. Somebody else spinning your wheel. You know what I'm saying? You're like disoriented because so many things are coming at you. That's mostly what happens. I've seen, look, I've, I've encountered people in certain places and then they tell me how they ended up there. It's insane. Like circumstance, put people in certain places. I uh, might stay at the Aria for the boxing match, right? It's a boxing match. Stay at the Aria, take a car over to, what, what theater was that? Michelob Ultra? Yes. Yeah, so stay at Aria, take a car over to Michelob when it's time. I'm in the Aria, meet someone. So, like, man, what you doing? How you end up in here? Man, I was actually driving home and then the traffic was blocked off. So I had to take a detour and turn to the right. And like, I wanted to go straight on Las Vegas Boulevard, but they had it blocked off right there. So I could have made a left or I made a right. I made a right. I ended up in the Aria parking lot. So I just figured I'd come in and gamble. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Gambling by chance. Bruh. <laughs> but it low key as a producer, I said, did Aria have anything to do with this? Like, why was the traffic blocked off? Like, so here's, say this is, um, say this is Las Vegas Boulevard, right? And the Aria is right here. Why was the traffic blocked off so you could still access their, their parking garage? Why wasn't it blocked off half a block before that? Did they lobby for that? Because see, when you're not a producer, you forget that a lot of shit ain't happened by chance. A lot of it happened because of what's called lobbying. Big bosses making things happen. You think when that road needs to be fixed, the road in front of Aria don't need to be fixed? Yeah, it does. They blocked that from being fixed. Or they said, hey, hey, city government, 
this is our, our revenue. We've mapped out our revenue over the year. Our low point in revenue comes in the month of May. We will allow you to work on the roads in May because that's when we get the least revenue. We cannot allow you to work on the roads in December because that's a heavy tourist season. We make a lot of money. Man, that makes so much sense why the traffic suck right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like when you're an ant, a worker ant, when you're a consumer, you just be going through life. People spinning your ass around on that goddamn merry-go-round. You about to throw up and shit. Life is bad. You don't know why. Some capitalist spinning that motherfucker, man. I'm trying to be the motherfucker spinning that bitch with a look, looking at his gold watch. Like I need me another one of these. Spin these motherfuckers. So what does it go back to leadership? Are you leading you? Is circumstance leading you? Is some company leading you? Is a UI UX designer on an app leading you? Oh, you follow these people because that was the next step in the signup process of the app. Oh, you brought this product because Gucci sent you an email. Oh, you ended up at the Aria gambling because the traffic was blocked off and you made a right, uh, really it was a wrong turn, but you made a right turn into their parking lot. You figure, ah, oh, why not? What choices did you make? What leadership did you exercise? What are you thinking as a consumer, as a producer? Who's really in control? Are you sitting on that merry-go-round or are you the one spinning that son bitch? Are you the one too scared to do anything so you're sitting in the, the bleachers of life or are you on the field? Are you sitting in the bleachers in life telling other people, hey, don't do it. Hey, it's dangerous. Don't get the visa. You still trying to go and they ain't getting the visas? Do you really think it's that, that dangerous? It's not a war zone. There's no war going on there. How dangerous could it be? I've heard this story before. That's what experience teaches you. When I was in Brazil, I heard this exact story. Before I went to Colombia, I heard this exact story. I've heard this before. That's the power of experience. Ah, and with all things, how can I have fun with this? Whatever it is, whatever you're doing, you should be asking yourself, how can I enjoy this, this process? Because one thing we know for sure is that life involves pain. Oh, there's going to be some pain, little buddy. I mean, even Devin Haney, yeah, he spent most of the time beating the brakes off an of old boy, but I'm sure he experienced some pain in being able to do that, whether it was the pain of training for a month or the pain of neglecting people he loves or the pain of getting hurt in sparring because he had to fight a lot of people in sparring before he got into that ring with the bright lights. Oh, well, there was some pain. Oh, well, how do I enjoy this? How do I give what I'm doing meaning? And then most of all, yeah, just go do something. See, the problem is people ain't doing the damn thing. They're talking about it. Sometimes they're not even talking about it. Here's worse. Some people do so such so little, they even tell you to not do anything. Mm -hmm. They don't do anything and they discourage others from doing something. And you know what? That's actually to their benefit because, well, if I can't wear the gold chain, I don't want you to have a gold chain. Yeah. If I can't be a boxing champion, I don't want you to be a boxing champion. We can be e we can be equal. We can be the same. Yeah, they, they try to tear you down because when you rise up, it makes them feel lower, even though they don't get lower, right? Like if I'm on the ground and you take a step up, I haven't become lower. I just feel lower because I know that I too could have done what you did and rose up. And I would hate to see you rise up because it just reminds me that I was too cowardly to rise up. So I can't let that happen. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some bad advice on purpose. No, don't go. Don't go. No, don't go off to college. Stay close to your family. Now, don't, don't box. You can get hurt. Don't start a new business. It's a bad economy. Don't go talk to that girl. She won't like you. She's stuck up. Don't wear a suit like that. It's too much. Infinite amounts of discouragement. Wildly negative world. That's why you have to lead yourself and you have to be your own voice. There's always a saint in the center. Don't be the center for yourself, holding yourself back. There's a lot of them already out there. But you for sure have to be the saint for yourself. There's not a lot of them out there encouraging you to do more and to do better. Make sure you do something, though. That's the key. Saints, uh, with that, I conclude this one. Uh, go ahead, hit us real quick. Austin is back with more tuition. Shout out to Austin. And Nicaragua Saint is back. Is that <laughs> how many days a week should you work out? He said how many days a week? Yeah. <laughs> right? 
a, a proper fighter is going to work, uh, work out six out of seven days. Cool. Um, let's go ahead and go into that, that next piece, uh, which is, uh, what are you going through? What are you going to? And I think we can go ahead and turn on the lights for this one. Okay. And so as members, if you go to the member site and you want to join on screen, the link is there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me go ahead and turn these lights. What's that? Yeah. Go ahead and hand that off to Jabri. So everybody got their workout stuff? Yeah, let's get it in there. Other side, it, it didn't come on. Okay, can, you, can we switch on to this one? Okay. Cool. Uh, sure. Well, no, no, actually, because I think people are going to come on. So when people come on, uh, we can see them. Move this. Okay, turn it off then. Okay, cool. All right. Cool. Who has the mic? I got mic. Cool, cool. All right. Come on up here then, my brother. Okay. My young black brother. <laughs> this man became saucy on these. Oh, yeah, you already know. Go ahead, bro. I might roll that red carpet out next time. Let your boy know. <laughs> you want a little bit. All right. Oh, we got to probably move this way then. Someone block this one. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Um, okay, so what are you going through? What are you going to? Okay. And then we uh, pass it off to the next person. So. What are, you, what are you going through? What are you going to? All right. So uh, what I'm going through currently right now is a lot of shifts. So uh, I got to I gotta create a lot of brand new pages for uh, my Facebook. And um, I'm going to the effort of uh, selling online digital courses and, uh, and products as well. Uh, some of the strategies that I kind of employed was... Um, make a jesus page uh like a, a facebook page facebook page okay. and the and the the character is jesus so i'm gonna hire a guy to be jesus and uh okay. hopefully i can sell some um some books on christian prayers and stuff like that to a christian audience because if you ask christians what they think about jesus i just believe they feel ecstatic all yeah, the time they mess with him so uh the content i was gonna make was like jesus helping people in public doing the same videos i'm doing where okay. i'm helping like other people in public but the character is Jesus, though. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh. So that's that's what I'm going to. So I, I guess, like, you know, um, I guess the big thing is, uh, you know, should I should I scale as fast as possible mm -hmm. um, or should I take it bit by bit? You, which one would you suggest? When I know what I'm doing, then I will pour in as much money as I can to make it big. But I, I want to figure out what I'm doing, which is to say, you know, What's the transaction? How am I, how, in other words, how am I making the money? And so once I have a good process that's tried and true, then I'm going to try to make sure I can repeat that process as quickly as possible. Okay. Yeah. yeah I usually, I feel like I got a big problem of, um, I get so overly ambitious yeah, that yeah. I end up doing so much. And then, uh, you know, I'll find out what works eventually, but I feel like it, it would have worked faster if like I would have slowed it down. So at, le at the beginning, at least, right? Yeah, in the, beginning. the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. How, what would you say is a good mindset to to um to kind of remind yourself to slow down? Like, when is okay? You said it's a good time to speed up, but when what is like a, a good mental frame to have of like taking at a good pace? So at the beginning, it's all about the details and getting things worked out so that the machine is reliable. So it's just like a car, right? So for example, say you're a car builder, and you're building a new type of car that you've never made before. If you were to get in that car and then try to drive it at 120 miles per hour, maybe it'll get up to 120 miles, but at, at that speed, it might break and it would kill you if you were driving it. It's an untested car. So what I would do is I would build the car as high quality as possible. Mm -hmm. And then once I know that it's super good, then I would put some speed on it. I'm like, oh, okay, this works. Now you want to start scaling, mass producing the car, producing it as quickly as possible because you've had time for yourself, your, your artisans, whoever's putting it together to get good at what they do. So now they can do it at quality fast. Mm 
-hmm. There's nothing wrong with doing things fast, but you have to do it fast at a certain level of quality or fast at a quality that people will buy. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. And me, I'm a I'm a careful person by nature. Like, you know, I I tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak. And once I'm like, aha, this is it, then I'm like, okay, now, now let's invest in like, for example, with Sunday service, we keep tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. What are the changes? We change the time that we meet. What are the changes? We add different elements. Okay, add the workout. Maybe that entices more people to come because guys like to work out. They get time to socialize. We tweak, we tweak. What do we do? We add the all saints meeting aspect so guys can come on and express themselves, give everyone voice. We tweak, we tweak, we tweak. Once we have it, okay, boom. Now we're going to start giving out handbills to, to the community to bring in some beautiful women into this thing to flood people in because we know the process. So once you master that, then scale it and do it big and do it like you're doing it for TV. Okay. I got, uh, I got one for relationships. Let, let's pull on a few people on here real quick. Uh, Bridge, can you pop on all three of them and then hit this view right here? Hit that view. Cool. That one. That's good. Oh, actually, yeah, there it is. Boom. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Melly Mel, what'd it do? Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. Respect to Mark Sweat. I've been seeing your work out here. I'm a, I'm a huge fan, I swear to God. And you've been changing lives and everything. But right now, my problem is that I've been doing some things that I'm personally not proud of. And sometimes I repeat the same mistakes. People don't want to change. I'm stuck, I feel like I'm stuck in a pattern, right? Repeating the same things, saying I would do something and not keeping up to my words, being comfortable being where I am. Mute that. Go ahead. And now basically, I want to know, how do I establish myself as someone that's to be looked up to someone who's dependable, like someone who is, he's got it. How do I, what steps are gonna make people trust me more, trust my decision making more, trust me to be a man of my words, trust my guidance, trust my ability to basically take care of it. Like, I don't wanna think Melvin's got it. You get what I'm saying? Because that's one of my biggest problems. I've never been, I've never held myself to a high performance stage. I've never had myself, like, I've never held myself to a high standard for most of my life. Because I've always had, I had an elder brother, so I've always had the responsibility to be on his shoulders. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to... um. We're going to answer your question because we know we got a number of folks who want to hop in. I'm going to pass the mic around. Uh, Jabri can sh uh, share some points if he has some, and then we'll pass it around this way. He's saying, you know, how can he start to hold himself to a higher level? You know, I find the best way to hold yourself to a higher level is really to detach from people who don't hold themselves to a higher level first. Mm -hmm. I think once you become very uh, okay with being in solitude mm. and then starting to work on yourself, all distractions are gone. And I believe it takes about like maybe 60 days for a person to really go through a full habit change. Oh, it's like a transformation. Yeah. That's I remember crazy. when I went vegetarian, it was crazy. I think uh, the first 30 days, I was like, it was like orange mucus coming out of my body. And it's crazy. I was like, yo, this is nuts. I don't know what's happening right now. But after that, I, I really I didn't have any cravings for food. No, no weird stuff happened after that. Yeah. Uh, did anyone else want to speak on it? I know, right? It don't matter. You want to, you want to take yeah, this Haven. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, this Haven. Um, you say you want to hold yourself more accountable. Well, one thing I've learned, one being with the Saints and just living, <laughs> that uh, procrastination is a killer. Like that would definitely slow down your momentum. And if uh, you really want to get motion, I would say. Build a routine like Marquette and the Saints always uh, like the jab journal and all that stuff that like they always preach. Uh, come up with a game plan because sometimes like for me, I overthink everything. And then I notice once I overthink, I give myself too many options and then I, I pretty much freeze myself. So it's like if you want to take uh, accountability, like you just have to come up with a game plan 
and make sure that you just basically like in a way like yeah you kind of become a robot but you doing it for the greater good like you you take thinking out of the equation you put everything down that you're trying to accomplish and then you just do it that way like you hold yourself accountable because now you got a list you see what you're supposed to do so now you're like all right that's what i gotta do if i don't feel like doing it or if i do feel like doing it you don't need motivation you just need discipline and a routine will give you discipline that's how it was for us in the military you just you know they give you a list you do it you ain't got no choice so it's basically like you got to do the same thing for yourself you got to give yourself no choice you got to just do it like naki say just do it <laughs> all right anybody else have anything else on that one fantastic awesome melvin appreciate you uh saint kh what they do baby uh peace of the saints do you uh, hear me peace okay well i just wanted to say peace to all the saints in attendance glad you all came out and also shout out to safe flows i got the Watch on right now, so uh, uh, home. <laughs> we out here. Uh, so, what, what are the questions? I want to stay on topic. So. Um, what are you going through, and what are you going to? Uh, well, I think what I'm going through. So, something interesting. So, I think I I asked you for advice like a couple of lives ago about uh the, my company's Christmas party, like how to move in that area. So that that was yesterday. So I went there, and things went good. But I was all I was kind of hyper conscious, like the social dynamic. So like my goal was to like shake hands with all the executives I knew. So I did achieve my goal, but also for like the means of achieving it weren't uh, satisfactory, even though I know I shouldn't be focused on necessarily the means. I spoke with uh, Say Flows about this earlier. He gave good insights. So I just bring it up. So what I was going through, that's kind of what's been on my mind recently. And when I say that, I feel like the interactions I had with the uh, executives were kind of like quick and they didn't uh, go anywhere, I feel like. so. I definitely feel like being younger and being at the bottom of the hierarchy within my company. Uh, that's something I've been thinking about. So I've been thinking about, oh, should I switch Tell me this. What, what stopped you from being able to shake the hands of all the executives you wanted to uh, shake hands with? Oh, nothing stopped me. I shook hands. It's that the interactions were quick. It was like, hey, how are you? Uh, I'm good. Okay, I got to go. It was kind of like that. And they ah, spent more okay, yeah. You know, it gets like that. And the truth is, and I've been in the situation when you're like the young guy, you're, you're the peon, right? The yeah. sometimes like there are older men who like, you know, I, I can see myself and you know, I want to mentor you. I want to help you. And then there are other guys that are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're not going to make me any money. You're not going to do anything for me. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you, kid, which is fine. You should expect that men don't always want to help men. Um, that being the case, you still got to get out there and keep shaking their hand every time you see them on a consistent basis. That's that presence and proximity piece. So you did the right thing by pulling up on them and just keep pulling up. They're going to remember, even if it's like, you know, among bosses, like, you know, like that kid with the glasses, that kid come say hi to you again. He's like, yeah. I'm like, what's that kid's name? You know, like <laughs> keep on pulling up until they know what it is. For sure. And that's what, that's what I was thinking. Like, cause right now the department I work at is health and safety. So I work on the safety side of things and it's not a very prestigious position, but it's what I'm good at. And you, and that's, that's what they want to pay me for. That's what I'm good at. So I'm, I'm exactly. fine with that, but I've always wanted to work in the defense industry. So now I'm in this like crossroads of, oh, so I just switched industries or so I just go to a more money-making department and maybe that would kind of raise my prestige in the company. So that's kind of like what I'm going through. So I stay in health and safety and just max out the bag there or should I switch departments or get switch industries or in general go to the defense industry and develop skills there. Yeah, go for whatever has the biggest bag. Here's a simple question I'm always, or a simple maxim I go by, which is the most money, the least effort. Mm -hmm. The most money, the least effort. Don't break your neck and don't break a sweat, right? Mm -hmm. um, Nate Lou, talk to us, boss. How you doing, fellas? Peace to the saints. Peace, Peace to the, the saints. saints. Um, Again, can you just repeat what the question was? Absolutely. Why you never hit that angle? I'm curious about that one. Can we hit that one one time? Um, the question is, what are you going through and what are you going to? When we say, what are you going through? More so like, you know, what, what are you experiencing? Um, what's the challenges? And then what are you going to? What's your goal? So as of now, I would have to say I'm going through the process of finding a balance uh, because I'm graduating this semester and, you know, I'm moving on now. I'm, to a new chapter in my life and I'm kind of um, trying to anticipate the things I'm going to um, expect to go through and I also want to get a, a balance of my what career I wanted to be in you know I, I'm a film studies major and I'm really trying to find what my niche is and get my name out there but I'm also um, a bit nervous as well 
nervous and um I would say nervous and anxious at the same time. So I'm, I'm really just my, my my goal is to really get myself out there, but I just um I'm trying to figure out where where else to start. Yeah. So my recommendation to you is number one yes, to, to write it down. So I think that it's when I listen to people and what they and they speak to something that's not sharp, not simple and clear. I know maybe you haven't thought about it enough or you haven't written about it enough. And so it sounds like you have a lot on your mind, which you should. You're about to graduate university and go into a whole different part of life. So if I were you, I would ask myself, what's the one thing that needs to happen in the next stage of life? For you, presumably, it's I need a job. <laughs> you heard me. That's what yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah. I need a job. So really, all you need to think about right now is the job. And I would probably align that to have I taken any internships or externships or any apprenticeship, anything that would line me up with, you know, okay, I can apply here and be successful. So is that the case that right now the most important next thing is a job? Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay, see, so you was BSing me when you started talking, like, I'm trying to find balance. No, forget all that. You're trying yeah. to find a job, okay? And here's the problem. When you don't know that acutely, Say he was hiring right now, and then I let you get off this call, and what we understood was that you're trying to find balance. Well, none of us can hand you some balance, but he could have handed you a job, though, and you missed out on that because you were not sharp and acute with precisely what you need. So it's that clarity, that simplicity, and that often comes from writing, but also thinking like, pull the emotions out. This is why we have a form like this. What am I going through? You can talk a little bit about the emotions, like let go of that, but the sharp part is, that goal. What am I going to? So what am I going through? That's like, you're like, Hey, I'm having trouble with the balance. What am I going to? A motherfucking job. <laughs> yeah. I need a job and be clear. Cause people out here can help you. You know, people can help you, but they can't help you if you don't tell them what you need. Forgive me. I didn't mean to come off that way. What's that? I said, forgive me. I didn't mean to come off that way. You know, I, no, no, you didn't come off yeah. bad. I'm you, you a young man in university. I would have said something similar, right? Which is yeah. quiet. I'm stressed. God damn it. It's <laughs> all about to be over. I just been hollering at hoes every weekend. <laughs> I really didn't show up to half my classes. I only did one internship and I really didn't like it. What do I do? Like, yeah, I'd have been in the same situation, bro. Um, but as someone who's, you know, in advance of you age wise, I, I know yes. you just got to sharpen up. Oh, is that the you? Oh, man. Well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. Yeah. So, so he just fixed this camera for me. And here's the importance. I often talk to you guys about expertise. See, expertise in the camera. I don't have time or interest to figure that out. Honestly, I don't. I don't. But I know someone who can. Say he bought in the camera. And it's a friend. Mm -hmm. And it cost me $0. Zero dollars. That's the key. And that's the most important thing about this community is like we have something real here. You can utilize it. You guys come here. Maybe one of you guys are thinking about doing something in the AV space. You're like, I didn't know you got a camera up there. Like, excuse me. No, hopefully you're not saying it like that. But he got a, <laughs> <laughs> he got a camera up there. Like you, you get a sense of how these things work. And that's important. And it involves going outside every now and then. Uh, Jonathan, talk to us. Redren. Okay, he, now I see him right there. Um, he's still muted. Uh, he might be on a bad pill. Keyshawn, go ahead. Hello, Peace of the Saints. Peace of the um, Saints. What I'm going through is seeing seeds grow, so being patient. Um, I just figured out a way to get my three days in while right. because I work remote, so I get to go to different places. I'm just starting to implement that. Um, waiting on the boxing shoe, got my running belt. Right here. Oh, um, so I'm just waiting on seeds to grow and just. I actually need one of those. Bridge, can you, um, where is that? Is that at assassin.com? The assassin.com. Oh, the assassin.com. T H E S A S N.com. Okay. Order me one of those because I actually sincerely need one. Absolutely. And that's one of the coldest running belts. Mine lasts me for three years and, and I get my miles in every day. Yeah. And you can wash it. Like that's what I liked about it because I sweat heavy. That's so like you can, mine. yeah, you yeah. can watch it. He still got his. Absolutely, that's a cold piece. Um, but go ahead. Uh, I don't have anything to complain about or, or not complain, but 
I don't have any. I'm like, I'm living good, Saint. Good, good, beautiful. I like that hoodie, mdblabel.com. Y'all better log in, boss up. The boy cold out there. And also we have a meeting for the practicum uh, this coming week for those who are taking the course on how to create and monetize your own app. Uh, we're meeting this week, live session. So it'll be great, like a business meeting. So remind me to uh, post that bridge for uh, people to see. Um, Jonathan, you just got to unmute yourself. There it is. Talk to us. Uh, sorry, every I was on my computer before. Every time you would say the questions, it would freeze. So do you mind repeating it one more time? Sure. Um, the question is, what are you going through and what are you going to? Okay. Um, currently, what I'm going through is the last week uh, of university for the semester finals. So that's just something I'm crushing out this next week. After that, um, I've ordered samples for a beanie that I want to get tested. One of the problems I'm going through is these manufacturers are, are they're playing a little bit. You know what I mean? One of my manufacturers, I ordered a, a beanie with a special thing in it, and then she wanted to send me a regular beanie. I don't know where this misconfusion started from, as if anything like that. So communication with um, manufacturers is seems to be a little bit of a problem. What I'm going towards is... Um, Hold on one second, player. Okay. So you have... Only one sample coming from a manufacturer, or do you have more than one sample coming from a manufacturer? I have um, three different man manufacturers that are sending me samples. One of them is sending me two samples, and the other okay. two are sending me one each. Okay, and one of them already screwed up. One of them already screwed up. Before they sent it me, luckily I caught it before they uh, sent it over, but they already not playing, and I'm, I'm not liking how they're, the Perfect. response. It's a little bit childish. Yeah, exactly. And that's precisely what you want. That's the reason that you have multiple manufacturers produce your sample. You see there's a breakdown in the communication. There's uh, challenges with English. Uh, there's inability to be attentive to detail and produce good products. This is good. This is what you want. And what I mean by that is you have created a situation wherein you don't have a system with a single point of failure. If you had one manufacturer, you'd have a single point of failure. You'd be dead in the water because this manufacturer is a goof. They don't really want this money. You have other manufacturers. So one thing that we often do, sometimes we're dealing with a broad that ain't worth nothing. You heard me, might be thick though, but she ain't worth nothing. Or you're dealing with a manufacturer who's sloppy. Is it worth me to get this, take out my time to get this broad to behave? Is it worth it for me to take out my time to get this manufacturer to make quality products? No, find another broad, use the other manufacturer. Don't bang your head into a wall, you feel me? There's always someone that's ready to go. And that's what you're searching for. So you be thankful because at the end of the day, you only need one manufacturer, right? You got three samples coming. One of them is a goof. Rock with the other two and don't expend any emotion on that one that's not producing for you. Right. And then what I'm working towards is obviously the um, or where I'm going to is starting this first business of mine, but also next semester, I have secured an internship at a uh, local tax firm. Um, and I will be doing tax returns for uh, local things in the area. So that's something I'm pretty excited about. Cool. Sounds good. And that's the Eritrean flag in the background? Yes, sir. You know it. You okay, know it. We've been you. talking about this. Now, do you have any family over there right now? I do have family over there right now. Um, I I sent in a super chat one time saying I was getting, uh, I was checking with people, seeing what I could get done for you. Because I know Do you know on, if it's dangerous that. over there right now? Um. So what I know right now is that uh, you're aware there's a little bit of this and that with Ethiopia and Eritrea because they're trying to get to those um, ports. I'm hearing that there's right. rising conflicts that are occurring. Um, so far, internally, uh, internal of the borders, I don't believe there's lots of amounts of um, violence. Um, I know the government is very strict and does not play. But um, there isn't like, you know, in Ethiopia, once you leave the capital of Addis Ababa, uh, it's there's a lot more risks to your uh, personal safety and all that. I don't believe that there is too much of that when you're in the cities of like Keren, Asmara, Nassau, yeah. you know what I mean? So once you get to the cities, I think you do need a, a visa to get every one of these things. But since it's, it is highly regulated, I don't believe it's too unsafe. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, if you could, if you'd be kind enough, if you have some family in Asmara, at the very least, since I presume that's where the main airport is proximate to Asmara, 
if you'd ask them like, hey, daily life, everything is fine. Uh, I'm pretty confident that it is, but it's just worth always getting good intel. So let me know. For sure, Saint. I will make sure to do that. Fantastic. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. Okay. Um, did you go? On what, what are you going through? What are you going to? Okay, go ahead. Talk to us. Uh -oh. oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, what am I going through? Yeah. Uh, what am I going through? Um, right now, I'm just like the uh, like most of the saints already. I'm just finishing up school. Um, it's a certification that I got like a year to take. Right now, I know that's not really something I need right now to get a job. So I'm I'm going to take it, but later down the line, before the year is up. Right now, I'm just uh making uh projects to build up my resume so I can look better. At, with the companies when I look for a job and just um, being a leader for my household. That's really like, like the first, you know, get the bag, but the second is being, <laughs> being, being a leader for my household. So, yeah. you know, just making sure, you know, my brothers is, you know, not being gamers, you know what I mean? So, which they actually doing pretty good with that. They, uh, they not, they, they starting to phase out. I feel like they starting to phase out of that gaming phase, you uh -huh. know what I'm saying? Especially, one of my other little brothers, I think he's like a shorty. Uh -huh. And I think now the fact that he's starting to like a shorty, I think it's starting to play with his mental a little bit more. Like, I got to get to the bag. I got to get on my, I got to get on my stuff. So I'm like, okay, you know, whatever it takes, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever it takes. Like, I'm just happy for him. Mm -hmm. and, you know, my, being a good boyfriend for my girl, because, you know, she's getting <laughs> on my nerves and all that. So I'm just trying to come into the middle, like trying to understand her a little bit more because she be, Cause she always preached like you're a leader. You need to be more. Sometimes she say I'm too nice. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like oh, when she my, wants you to lay yeah. down some authority. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, <laughs> she be like you too nice. Like, and then I tell her like, no, I'm not nice. I just I'm probably more patient because uh -huh. I know if I I got an anger issue. So if I get to a certain <laughs> level. I'm gonna be ready she to fight. She's to turn you to the hole. Yeah, basically. <laughs> He's like, like you yeah. Don't want that. Cause when I do turn up, yeah. she gets scared, and uh -huh. now I scare her, and now she don't want to be around me. You know what I'm saying? But when I'm not, I'm too. You know what I'm saying? I'm too oh, nice. So Lord. it's like, so she. Got, so I guess in a way, I'm trying to find a balance too. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like trying to control my anger better, trying to you know be more uh, assertive without being. Angry, yeah, yeah, that'd be a violence, yeah. And you know what? Uh, shout out to Isaiah because he usually runs the All Saints meeting, and in the All Saints meeting, that's where we uh, have the "What are you going through? What are you going to?" I don't recall if there's like a, a time limit to each piece, but we'll say we'll try to keep it to twenty seconds on each one. Mm -hmm. I should have asked him before this because it's his expertise. Expertise is everything. Mm -hmm. um, let's rotate in, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Jordan. Okay, shout out to Brandon. We'll put Brandon on there while we transition in. <laughs> Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. Oh, you gonna go for no, it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, my bad. Yeah. So, um, what I'm going through, uh, as some of you know, you know, I have I have a daughter now. Mm -hmm. So now being a dad and dealing with a woman who is much advanced in my age. So, like she's 40, right? I'm 26. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a difficult situation. Yeah. She does have a lot of wealth for uh, undisclosed reasons, you know. So, <laughs> so it's. It's dealing, it's dealing with a lot of different things, you know. Yeah. Undisclosed reasons. Yes. Go ahead, bro. Right. Not, not like she's selling it. She's not selling it. No, 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 no. Undisclosed. Reasons. But undisclosed, just not that. Just don't yeah, think. Yeah. yeah. So I'm dealing. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going through. Is trying to, you know, be a good dad and to deal with a woman who, uh, you know, has a lot of issues. Yeah. And then at the same time, uh, what I'm going to, I'm actually learning how to get into the tech space. Whether well, my ultimate goal is trying to sell in tech. Okay. Because I think I have a lot of good, you know, in-person sales skills. Yeah, that's my eventual goal: tech sales. Uh, but I'm trying to get in the space any way possible. So I'm actually learning the code. So then, if I can start with the building blocks and then network with the right people, I'm gonna get a job regardless. Even if I don't get in tech sales, I know I'm gonna get a coding job. So that's that's what I'm going to. Yeah. Most definitely, you know. There you go. All right. Cool, cool. Hey, right, right. Say no more. <laughs> it's the same. Um, congratulations, congratulations on on Thank your you. daughter. Do you feel any different? Like I do 100%. Mm -hmm. Um you don't you don't really feel it until you start to realize responsibility. Huh. But that's not even 
the correct way I can encapsulate it, I'd have to tell you a story in order for you to like really understand what I'm saying. Okay. Like when I was in the military, right? Yeah. I had no responsibility. I was a 19 year old kid, 20, 21, mm -hmm. doing whatever I please. And then I got myself out of the army doing some dumb shit. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> undisclosed. Yes, undisclosed <laughs> dumb shit. So, but the first sergeant, when I was, when he was uh, signing my paperwork to get me out, he actually sat there and he talked to me and he, and he, he leveled with me because he was a Puerto Rican dude from Florida. Okay. You know, so he wasn't, he wasn't, this was like a dude from the hood. You know You're what I'm like, saying? Papa, Papa, you fucked yes. up, man. Yes, type of, type of energy. Type of energy. He had been in 20 years. He was like, when I came in, he's like, I had no responsibility. Yeah. He looked me in the eyes and he was like, he saw the reason I was getting out. And he told me, you need a responsibility. Like, you have no responsibility. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, you're yeah. childish. You know what I'm right. saying? And I was like, whatever, man. Like, right. I was listening to him sure. and I heard him. But at the time, I didn't really grasp it. And then when I had my daughter, I realized, yeah, like I needed responsibility. Now I have responsibility. Now I put my own foot on my own neck. You know, right, I lead right. myself. I don't need nobody to tell me to get up. I don't need nobody to tell me what to, you know. And I and I I follow. I I look for people to lead me, the the correct people, rather than just like, okay, whatever feels good in the moment, right? That's why I'm here with the Saints because I'm like this man is a leader, you know. So I'm like, I follow this man. This is the type of dude who, you know, if we're going to combat, he's gonna go to the front. Mm -hmm. and he's gonna give you game plan and then if you're bullshit and he's like all right we're knocking you off first because you're stopping you're you're fucking up the mission you know what yeah. i'm saying you're, you're making this a problem and that's the type of leader you should follow not the type of person who's just you know it's easier or something they're just chilling yeah they just oh yeah can you full screen real quick since jordan is talking thank you perfect um and and i'm asking you this because you're in an experience that many who are watching will go through and so it's what's coming up for them. So you you in advance of them. Tell me what this was like when you realize, okay, this kid is coming. Ain't no stopping it. This kid, <laughs> yo, ain't no stopping it. This kid is coming. Like, what what did that feel like in your body and in your mind? What what was that experience? It just made me realize I gotta I gotta step up. I gotta be a man, and I gotta figure out what I exactly need to do every single day to show this young woman one day how to you know how to find a proper man mm -hmm. how to how to find a leader how to lead herself first mm -hmm. you know how to how to become the person she wants to be mm -hmm. um yeah I mean, it's a good reference point and then then when i started to realize oh her mother's a problem you know what i'm saying <laughs> but then at the same time her mother her mother is wealthy you know mm -hmm. she's making over six figures a year and That's like helpful yeah she's a stay-at-home mom she don't even do that she just has money All from right. someone who died pretty much right yeah sure. so yeah, yeah. He I won't talk about the resume. He didn't under, He didn't disclose. <laughs> no, because the there's, there's, there's more to the story. I done, <laughs> I done told Corey this is some of the story. There's more to the story. He knows what I'm talking yeah, about. So Pablo so. Escobar, right? <laughs> it, it died when Pablo got locked up. Then, uh, <laughs> so so it's like so I didn't feel the pressure financially because I was like, you know, my daughter's gonna be fine regardless. Yeah, you know, she's gonna be able to pay for a private school. But then it made me realize, what if ha something happened to her? The mom. Yeah, the mom. What if something happens to mom now? I can't do something? No. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get on the wheel first. No, no. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, like, what if she was sick? What yeah. if, you know, what if she passed away or something? Yeah, she fought anything happened to her? Yeah, you know, went out there, whatever it may be. Right? No, but for real, though, if, right, yeah. if anything happened to her, then I would have to then step up and be able to fulfill those needs. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm making yeah. half of the income she's making right now. Right. So I'm like, okay, cool. I need to first match her and then double that. And then triple that yeah. and then quadruple that right. because in my mind i'm like if i had the money she had right now i would not be wasting it on on purses on oh, shoes i wouldn't have a, a closet full yeah. of shit that i don't wear i wouldn't right. have all these things and go on you know trips that don't really benefit me or anything mm -hmm. you know buying all this extra food i would i would be a lot more focused and right more minimalist with it mm -hmm. so it just made me realize that yeah i had to i had to put my foot on the gas i gotta take this very seriously and i can't just sit here and, and play with this hey by the way bridge are we caught up Okay. Yeah. And do we know, um, is the chest, are they just like in trance right now or do we know if the chat is frozen? Okay. They can respond to that. Go ahead and, uh, catch up real quick. Someone just had a, stay right there. No, I'm not done with you. <laughs> Go ahead. Catch us up real quick. We have Carter said about to cop the communication course. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. On PayPal, we have Kendall said, your point, do something, strikes home with me. Mm -hmm. People get mad at me for solving a problem they are doing nothing about. Mm -hmm. Austin is back with more tuition. Shout out to Austin. Nicaragua Saint is back and said, what is the key for gaining size when weight training? Calories. Protein, high quality proteins, uh, eating a lot of it right foods it's about it you have to overeat essentially you gotta overeat and lift heavy okay we have karis sent tuition shout out to karis 
Nicaragua Saint is back again and said, audience can answer my questions if they like. Okay. What's the question? That was the one, I guess, the one about gaining weight. Oh, yeah. Anybody have any anything I, special? I got a lot of experience. Oh, you got a lot on that? I have is, one more. Why don't you just... Is that the last one? No. We okay, have... we're going to come back to that one then. Go ahead. Okay. We have Mr. Thompson said... Want to gain muscle and don't want to pay extra money for food while I'm in college. Want to go to the pantry even though I could pay for food. Feel like I'd be taking food out of others' mouths who need it more. What's the saintly route to go? Bruh. No. Be yourself. Be good to yourself. Be good to good people. You're not taking food out of others' mouths unless you're like somehow in an orphanage in like Sierra Leone. Like, like what are you? You're not in an orphanage in Sierra Leone, bro. You're not. Bro, get the fuck out of here, man. Let's get serious. You got to eat heavy, eat protein, and, and lift heavy. Obviously, there's a number of supplements you could take, but those are not going to be real gains. Creatine is going to put a lot of water weight on you, and you're not going to be truly strong. That's it. But all that other stuff, man, you got to really want to win. Talking about, I, I might be taking food out of other people's mouth. Bro, that's what the world is. It's either, look. It's like, okay, these are our people. These are the saints. And everybody out there don't matter. You heard me? Don't take money out of the mouths of the people who matter to you. Because I promise you, them people out there, they'll snatch food off your plate. Talking about, I'm, bro, you got to really want to win out here. I don't think you want to win. That's my challenge to you is do you really want to win? So what he said about uh, how do you just gain weight? If your only goal is to gain weight and still be uh, at least muscular or whatever it may be, I actually have a lot of experience with this. I've been skinny my whole life. Um, you know, I was a skinny kid, went to the army, gained 20 pounds in the army, being super skinny and everything like that. I was like 140 mm -hmm. at the time. I've actually gained 50 pounds over the course of four months before, and then I lost it because I couldn't maintain it. But I went from like 140 to 180 something, you mm -hmm. know, like almost 190. What you do is count calories. You figure out what your mm -hmm. body weight is and you figure out how many calories do I need to ingest and then keep in my body in order to, uh, yeah, you know, hit this calorie mark because you have to be in a calorie uh, surplus. Yeah, cal caloric surplus, right? So for me, when I was like one, getting to 180, I was eating like 4,000 calories a day, but I was drinking half of those because I'd be drinking mass gainers. That's another good, <laughs> a good tip. Drink a mass gainer because that'll give you a lot of protein, carbs. It has, just read the back of the package, right? And it'll give you, I was, I was drinking 2,000, 2,500 calories a day. And then I would eat out of like a Korean barbecue buffet. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, boom, boom, done. Right. And you drink it. If you're, if you at any point during the day, you're hungry and you're trying to gain weight, you're doing it wrong. So mm. that's, that's, that's a, that's a, I like the simplicity of it. If you're hungry, you're doing it wrong. You should be full the whole time. Yes. And ideally with high quality protein, yes. like there's not all proteins are created equal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And get serious, bro. Cause honestly, like a lot of things are not deep. Like when Brody's talking about like, I don't want to take food out of the bro, get the f out of here. Like, I don't feel like you serious. Cause when I get serious about things, I'm I'm almost disrespectful. When I'm serious about something, I'm almost disrespectful. Like when Bridget that came in here, brought the food in, I was already here preparing for Sunday service. She hadn't even said anything. I was like, look, just give me the food. I don't even remember what I was like, look, just give me the food. Don't say anything else. I'm disrespectful because I'm so hyper focused on what I have to do. I haven't said hello, how are you, thank you, none of that. All it is is set that food down, don't say nothing, don't distract me, I'm zeroed in. This is the time I got to prepare for this thing. Don't interrupt me. I'm serious about nothing else matters at that point. Like when you get serious, you don't care if you're taking food out of people's mouth, you hear me? If you need the food, wherever the food at, you're taking it. If it got to come out of baby mouth, I don't know that baby. <laughs> you feel me? That ain't my baby. <laughs> what we talking about, bro? For real though. Um, cool. Uh, okay, so you gave us the what you're going through and what you're going to. All right, cool. We appreciate you. Uh, absolutely. Let's let's uh, switch that in. Then. Oh yeah. Uh, go ahead, Brandon. Talk to us. So, I made this huge blunder. Um, I went to a party, right? Uh, somebody's birthday party, and there was a whole bunch of people who I do business with at this party. And I wasn't practicing silence. And I said something that these uh, folk, I live in Washington, very blue state. I said something that these folk really didn't like, right? So I made that blunder. And then after that, I learned 
uh, that one of the people I do the most of my business with that makes the most money with me and I pay him the most money, he's actually um, dishing out poison to other people, trying to get other people not to uh, do business with me. Uh, and also just saying bad things about me behind my back that aren't even true, right? Is this all because all, of what you had said at that party? Yes, yes. Damn. Although, although um, he was already, um, you know, spreading poison. But this was, it was one of those things where it's like, uh, it was taken as gasoline and set everything on fire, right? Like at first he was just trying to, you know, whoop de whoop, but this really set things off. It gave like a reason. It was an excuse, right? Um, so that's what I'm going through. And what I'm going to is get into the top of the mountain so I can leave these individuals, these uh, people that I thought I trusted and I thought I could call my friends um, in the mud. I want to leave their dicks in the mud and rise to the top. <laughs> gotcha. So that's it. <clears throat> All right. So uh, the good news is that you did this to yourself, right? That's yeah. the good news. Yeah. <laughs> and what I mean <laughs> yep. with that? No, you're completely right. I need to shut yeah. the fuck up sometimes. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the good news. And I, I think that's the good news because often in life we have those situations where you're like, ah, I, didn't, I didn't do this. Like, I didn't set this up, but here I am suffering because of something beyond my control. So it's always nice when it, you like, you're like, look, <laughs> I messed this up myself. That's beautiful. Number one. Then number two, you mentioned that these are folks you knew you can't trust. Well, seems like you figured that out late. And in as much as that's the case, you know, you got to sharpen up and really know who you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You do want to be able to predict people at some level. Like a lot of you guys that like we've seen each other before, like we're, we're months, years in. And so that's because we rightly assessed who you guys are. And then we've been consistently who we are, who we've interpreted you to be. You know, you guys represent yourselves well. That's why we don't have anybody missing, right? Like even folks who are not here like Nick, like Nick still sent in. We know he's here. He couldn't be here for business purposes or business reasons. And as much as that's the case, being able to assess people's character quickly is important. Also in business, sometimes you put together a team. You have to hire uh, folks that are not values aligned because you just need someone. It gets like that. Some you just got to hire someone either because your budget is limited or because they're the one that's available, whatever the reason is. And you know they're temporary. So when they come in, you're like, okay, this person's a kind of a weirdo. At some point, I'm going to need to replace them or fire them or let them go. I know that. So I'm going to be searching while you're working, serving the business, but I'm going to be searching for your replacement. And that's something you just have to know up front. And in your case, you knew you weren't values aligned with a number of these folks. And so one of your goals should have been off rip is I got to replace them because at the end of the day, you cannot have people within your circle who don't like you. Even within the Lady Saints, you know, and shout out to the Lady Saints, I got to invest some more time with them uh, as soon as I can, but very good women. And they had a Lady Saint come in like, you guys like Marquette? He says crazy things. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we do. That's why we're a part of this. We believe in the overall message. Like when, when he says some wild stuff, we know he's not talking about us. He's talking about these three foes. Yeah, we like and respect him. Eventually they had to move her out because he's not values aligned. And so you have to know when there's poison that's come within this thing of yours within your business and you have to be making plans. That's the key to leadership. I mentioned earlier is knowing what's next, right? Like you always got to know what's next. And that's why, that's why HOE pays a P because she don't know what's next, but you always know what's next. You always got a trick up your sleeve. You always got something you could pull out. You always got the next thing. You got the next thing to say. You got the next thing to do. That's your game. She living right here in the present. She's playing checkers. She's playing connect four. You're playing chess. You got the next 10 moves mapped out. You're like, look, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You guys spend time around me. You're always going to hear me talking about, yeah, and then I'm going to do this. And yeah, and then we got to get a place here. And I got to, I'm, I'm already there. But if you track and you've been with me a long time, you know, like everything he said he was going to do, he's done. That's the important part. Like when you're around a woman and she observes, oh, he said he's going to do this. He said he's going to do that. And I was like, man, that's crazy. But then he did it. Oh, she gonna really rock with you heavy, mm -hmm. but you gotta always be asking yourself what's next, because when the moment arrives, if you weren't prepared for it, you're gonna screw it up. You can't. It, it might seem like I just show up and start talking. No, like the whole day I've been running through my head. I already gave the talk like five times. 
Like you, you're no one is good enough to just show up and just do it without messing it up. Brandon, fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Talk to us. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Uh, this is this is uh, Saint Martin. Um, so what I'm going through right now is I've kind of hit the ceiling in terms of what you kind of mentioned before in terms of being a coach mm -hmm. and your time and me physically being there. And there's a premium, obviously, when you are in person. And um, now I'm trying to I'm what I'm going through is trying to find the transition of that my brain or my expertise into a more of a broader uh, um, audience in terms okay. of going into the social media and not finding income to eventually mm -hmm. uh, substitute that, but starting the route to that. Mm -hmm. And my struggle is um, when the when the money's coming in fast and good physically, mm -hmm. and I give up time and my time mm -hmm. isn't being compensated, I feel some type of way where it's like, <laughs> right, man, I got to get out there and I got to yeah. I got to make it. Whether it's mm -hmm. training, you know, one on one group training, whatever it is. I feel like I got to go out there and I don't give my patience, myself the patience to, hey, it's the bigger picture. Yes. You, might, you may not get paid now, but it'll happen in the future. So what I'm going to mm -hmm. is just trying to force myself to give, be, myself, be a little more patient, mm -hmm. give myself the okay to say, hey, you've been working so hard. Mm -hmm. You don't have to make a buck every hour, but the time that you are putting will pay you in the future yeah um so that's kind of where i see myself um trying to see that struggle where it's mm -hmm. hey i'm gonna give my i'm gonna put in that time on the internet phone and the snap then you know two three hours i'm like man i could have made a couple hundred bucks right in mm -hmm. the in the same amount of time so it's just finding that that battle within me and trying to let go of the old person i was mm -hmm. of the the hustler and the you know the work ethic and going into the don't work so hard uh don't work as hard, but try to work as smart now. So mm -hmm. working a little smarter. Um, so I'm trying to go that route, trying to go down that pathway. And that's what I'm trying to tell myself is be patient. It, it'll, mm -hmm. you know, pay out on the end, but um, just enjoy the trip, enjoy yes. the ride and, and go from there. So that's mm -hmm. kind of where, where I'm, where I'm at right now and kind of where I'm going through in the, in the near future. That's really good because you're letting go of an employee mindset because employees get paid hourly. Mm -hmm or they get paid salary, but they know there's a direct correlation between time spent and dollars earned. Mm -hmm. And so you're transitioning into a, a situation wherein you're making an investment, in this case, an investment of time in yourself, and more importantly, in the future self. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that you're going through an expected internal struggle as you transition, and, and that's good, and you're aware of what is going on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're doing the right thing, and it will pay off, I promise you. It absolutely will pay off. Um, I've, I cannot tell you how many times not only have I worked without getting paid, but I'm talking about work like a dog, mm -hmm. you know, a like long consistent mm -hmm. hour. So it will pay off and honestly, it'll pay off in more ways than you even expect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so keep going, keep going. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Peace of the saints. Peace of the saints. Yeah. Who we got? <laughs> as, as Bridget would say, Ken. <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you. Oh, <laughs> uh, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Um, what am I going through? through? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, um, you know, just uh, being able to balance, uh, uh, being able to explore the world mm -hmm. and then also, uh, you know, messaging a whole bunch of people at one time and then uh seeing if i can still be ambitious with other projects outside of work mm. um uh and then yeah that's that's pretty much it okay and what about going to what are you trying to achieve what's your big thing right now what's my big thing right now uh got a couple of um uh app ideas that i want to be able to develop myself but i might consider finding some developers for that mm -hmm. um with a bunch of traveling that i've done and uh, some other activities i haven't been able to do as much as i as i want to uh okay. but that's that's the main thing and you're developing these for fun or for business for profit for profit very good 
right. you got the revenue models together. You know how they make money. Uh, yes. Good. Yes. Good. Excellent. All right. Fantastic. Yeah, that's the most important thing. I always remind people, especially when you're looking at making an app, you look on your phone, you might have 60 apps on your phone. Well, how many of them do you pay for? Usually the answer is like zero, one, or two out of 60. So having a good revenue model when you're in the software business is extremely important. Um, so good, good. That's number one in making the app is what is the revenue model? So excellent. Happy to hear it. Okay. Um, so excellent. Let's... Uh, can we get you? No. All right. Appreciate it. It says St. Martin is an island. I was like, why does that sound so right when he said that? <laughs> Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. St. Corey. What I'm going through. So there's a pretty big transition that I'm going through right now. And I think the going through part is just the mental preparation for it. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to disclose too much. It's shout undisclosed. Out to, shout out to JG. I don't want to disclose too much. <laughs> right, right. It's undisclosed. It's undisclosed. But it's an opportunity or it's, it's an interesting segment you had here. We were discussing about risks. Yes. So it's a pretty big risk. But I think now in my current state and where I'm at, it's probably the best time for me to do so. I'm still young. You don't have any kids. No kids. Okay. Um, and I don't think a lot of people would relate. I think a lot of the saints would understand it's um, something that can certainly put me at the forefront or put me in a more comfortable position financially. Male gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to be Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, but yeah, it's just the mental preparation of that. It's a transition that has to deal with a move. Like I'm not moving a different state, but just mm -hmm. moving to a different area within Las Vegas. Okay. Um, and then where I'm going to, that's part of it. Mm -hmm which is happening at the top of the year. Okay. But where I'm going oh, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the timeline is going to be around six months. If everything goes well, yeah. hopefully it does. It might be some hiccups, but I think I can manage. Yeah. Um, where I'm going to, just trying to be the top producer of the company I'm with right now. Mm -hmm. Still relatively new, been yeah. there about six, seven months, but mm -hmm. every person that's ahead of me is just eating me up. Like, you know, I want to be ahead of them by a lot. They're, you know they're I mean? performing they're a performing lot. They're performing higher. You have know, you talked to any of them about how oh they're yeah. doing so well? Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I connect. I connect with them daily. Okay. You know. You know what's the strategies they have? Mm -hmm. Who are their connections? What is their you know operating mode? You know how do they prospect? All that stuff because I'm okay. in sales. Yeah. So I try to get all that information, all the detail from the people who are above me, so you know I can eventually pass. Them. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going. That's what I'm going through and going to. Right now. Congratulations. That's good. That's good. I mean, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, it, look, look, man, take that risk. Let's oh, yeah. see what happens. Let's oh, yeah. see what happens. I'm taking it. Mm -hmm. For sure. Good. We got everybody? We Oh, really? He's a, he, he, Brody was in the gym, too. So, man, put that man back on screen. That's the man. expertise. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. So, so, saints, this is the thing from what the other sense say it's about calories, how they gain weight. If you want to gain weight, right, you want to make sure you're not gaining body fat. You're not gaining subcutaneous body fat, right? You're not putting on the nasty weight. So whatever you're eating right now, you want to add a little bit. A little bit, like let's assume 200 calories. That's all it takes for you to put a muscle. You should go above that 200 calories. And you should gain like a pound a week. A pound a week. Make sure you still have your abs showing. If you're not having abs while you're bulking, you're getting fat. You're eating too much. You're overeating, right? You want to make sure that you look good throughout the bulk. You should go up to 15% if you're a leaner. Then you put on weight gradually. If you start putting on like a pound a week, then you should add like that 200 calories again. So that's how it goes with losing weight, getting shredded, or gaining weight. If you want to get lean, you take out 200 calories. It might be just an egg out of your food, the food that you eat normally. Maybe an egg taken out. You should lose like a pound a week. Same thing if you want to gain. You add like maybe an egg or something. 
little, it doesn't matter what it is, just little calories, that addition should change your body composition if you keep it consistent. And now if you plateau, right, you might either add cardio or reduce cardio. It's calories in, calories out. Fat is nothing but excessive energy. The energy that's not used from overconsumption is stored as body fat. And it takes energy to build muscle. So you can either go up or down the scale. Or you can main gain. You can stay at a body fat where you're excessively fluffy, right? And then stay at that weight, eat whatever you're eating right now, and feel your muscles when you're in the gym. Feel the contraction, make it more like an experience. Don't try to rush it. Feel the pain. You're a man. You should feel the pain. Working out should be not you're trying to go in and get out. You're trying to feel the muscles. You're trying to watch the muscles. You're trying to make sure that you're not taking it like a joke because you're a serious man. You're taking everything seriously. You're working out well. You're making sure you're feeling the contraction, right? And through that, you should be able to stay at your body weight and put on muscles while staying at the same body weight. So you see a change over time. <laughs> he going in. <laughs> He dead serious too. Like he's not even playing with you right now. Yeah, and he's in the gym. Yeah, right that's authentic, right? Yeah, there. I used to be three hundred and thirty. I lost like one forty, and then I decided to bulk back up. I'm at two eighty right now, pretty much leaner than I was two years ago. So this is something I feel really passionate about. I lost one hundred and forty pounds, gained like seventy pounds, but of good weight. So if you do this right, your body should be in a position to gain good muscle. And that's basically it. Don't complicate shit. You should look like your dream body or something close to it by doing this as I tell you. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. just told you there, ladies and saying. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, yeah, he was serious about that. We might need to make a course. All right, yeah, same. Same said they got hey, same. Well, you, know, you said 280. Cats was like, wait, how tall yeah. is Brody? I'm 6'4. 6'4. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. we going to have to hire same. some bodyguard detail. Yeah. <laughs> same. Look. Any of you guys need a, a fitness model or any merch modeling? I'm in good shape. I'm willing to do it. Just send the product <laughs> my way. Shit. He said, I'm I try to start. <laughs> I'm out here, Saints. Fantastic. Can we get everyone who called in? Okay. And we got everyone here? In person? Thank you, Saints. Peace to the Saints. Um, Peace to the Saints. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, shout out to Barry. Peace of the Saints, indeed. Yeah, shout out to Melvin. We appreciate the support. Mel Melvin's a real one. You might recognize him from his uh, his name on Patreon. Absolutely. Saints, it's been a pleasure. We have Gio sent a cash out and said two comments in the chat. I don't see it. Oh, they're up in the middle. Okay. You saw them? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you scroll up. I was thinking getting a touch screen. I might need a touch screen, huh? I'll just say, yeah. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, we're going to go ahead and wind this down with For the Good of the Assassin. If you guys just want to circle it up, that one's heavy as hell. So, Martin, you just move yours. Um, St. Giovanni writes, I could complain, but I'm upset and asking, why is this happening? But I'm just thankful. Thankful I'm able to be in position to join this service. I'm able to be in position to send in. True story. He writes, thankful I'm able to be a part of this family. I have my struggles, but I feel better. We are here. Sassin or nothing. Shout out to the big homie. And that's real. Sometimes they get like that. You know, it's those simple things. And you know, the beautiful thing I often remind folks is like right now, it doesn't matter if any one of you are a millionaire, a billionaire, or a million dollars in debt. Like right now, it's like you're you're enjoying the moment. 
you have a full stomach, like you're good. We're not worried the roof is going to cave in. There's no war going on right now. Like in this moment, you can be happy. Like you can just leave all of your troubles, your problems, wherever they at. You know, sometimes those problems are people. <laughs> she at home right now, but go ahead. Shout out to Austin. You think you probably hit that baller alert? I don't, I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Shout out to Beast, though. I saw him coming in. Um, for the good of the assassin, I'll let you kick it off. Let me just swing it that way. For the good of the assassin, I'm really appreciative of, I know we say this a lot, but it rings true, so I'm going to repeat it, of the community that we have. I think it's safe. I, I know that it's people that I've known for years, mm. from childhood, from high school, that I can't rely on. Mm. that I don't even want to associate with, mm. but people in this room that I've known for maybe a little over a year, maybe a year and a half, almost two, that I trust and value much more than those people that I've known much longer. Um, so I did, did want to emphasize that a little bit more, and I'm really excited about what we can continue to do, the relationships we continue to build, and the relationships we now have strengthen. So I yield the floor. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the good assassin, um, I'm thankful and appreciative that we can uh, come and do another Sunday service. Mm -hmm. um, the last two that I missed, it was, I, I notched, I put a note in my head, and, and I haven't had that feeling uh, maybe for over ten years. Back when mm -hmm. I was playing again, uh, and and you know putting myself uh, a responsibility and accountability to, mm -hmm. sh to show. So I'm appreciative, thankful. Uh, I'm thankful for the new setup. We would actually get the Saints online to actually jump into. Yeah instead of just the the guys here so that's mm -hmm. a good experience and, and get to meet more of this uh of the saints as well so mm -hmm. i yield the floor uh for the good assassin i am thankful for first of all having this man as our leader uh because it's not a lot of men that are like you you know and that that's right. that doesn't need to be said you know we all can feel that you know the minute you meet him you know there's a lot of people who are internet trolls and <laughs> And they don't meet in real life. They don't do this. You know, they're just people on the internet. They're just some random dude on the internet. And then they got a whole army behind them. And it's like, do y'all even know this man? This dude's a weirdo. Like when you start to really <laughs> right. dig in. And then when you meet you, it's like, this dude is exactly, everything lines up and is even like better than, you know, just like the, the BS you see on the internet. So I'm thankful for that. And, you know, cause you make me want to be a, a better leader. You make me want to actually step up for myself. So I yield the floor. For the good of the assassin, um, I'm uh, thankful to be around um, people who, whose whose values you know up front, mm -hmm. and like when you see these people in person, they are about who they say that they're about. Mm -hmm. um, and whenever they, whenever people, since they're very authentic and about what they're about, when they explain something, it's very mm -hmm. uh, concise straight to the point but you learn so much unlike uh that one person we watched uh, the other day <laughs> that, that was almost like listening to egyptian hieroglyphics it just like no very very great uh you know very um, a very great person i i'm sure um but uh it, and but it's it's just great to be around people who who are consistent, still doing a bunch of great things. You meet them; they, they're, they're, um, they're, they're the same person. They're not, they're not snakes. They're, they're none of that. Um, uh, just very grateful to be amongst uh, people who are also being great. Mm -hmm. People who have goals. <clears throat> I, I yield the floor. For the good of the assassin, uh, I'm extremely proud. Uh, Arquette is really. Set something, uh, set something up here that's really beautiful. Um, you got the spotlight. He was telling me, he said, man, I need to use this spotlight. I didn't even use it yet. <laughs> right? And he used it for the first time. It looked really good. First time, yeah. yeah, I liked it. I was like, I was on my phone in the car and I was looking at it. And I was like, this brother got it going on. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. So uh, I can't wait to see things evolve over time. I can't wait to see, uh, you know, this be put to use and, and uh, the the fruit that'll bear from this. Mm. I very excited. I yield the floor. For the good of the assassin, 
like uh, Corey said, I'm just thankful to be a part of this nation and around surrounded by good people. And it's it's like, you know, uh, what they say, iron sharp as iron. You know what I mean? And I feel like I'm just getting sharper every day. Just getting sharper every day. Getting getting wiser. Getting sharper. If I need uh, any type of um, experience from other people or uh, knowledge, I can reach out. I have people I can reach out to that has lived more life than me or has experienced something more than I have, and I can ask them about it and get uh, realistic, wise advice, not none of that, you know, humbo jumbo they throw out on social media because everybody knows how to get money and make a quick buck, but, you know, Mark Way, he teaches us how to, he teaches us how to get to the bag, but he also lets you know that you're going to have to work for it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what a lot of people leave out. They always, like, the quickest way to make the fastest amount of money with, with the least amount of work, which is possible, but my mom always taught me anything worth having don't come easy. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to have to work. But once you get the ball rolling, once you get some motion, then you can, you know, then, yeah, the easy part comes. But you got to get your got to get your feet wet first. And um, I'm just thankful to be here. I yield the floor. Mm -hmm. oh, actually, I don't need that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really about to take that. Yes. Uh, you want to give that to Bridget? Yeah, shout out to Hector. And on PayPal, we have Jalon said, thank you for my new favorite segment from you. Sunday service is definitely a great one. Peace mm -hmm. to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. And the Saint Key is still down there, but he did write, he said, for the good of the Sassin, I'm thankful for all the Saints that make up the Sassin and show support. I did link his running belt for people that want to get it. Yes, indeed. And it, his photo on YouTube is the running belt. It's a great product. Yeah, that is a good product. For the good of the Sassin. <clears throat> um, I, I want to thank uh, Bridget for being uh, tough. And, and uh, I, for some reason, I want to say durable. I don't know why, but <laughs> for, for being tough, because when I'm focused, I can be unpleasant. I ain't even gonna pretend like I, I'm. I can be extremely unpleasant. Because, not lying. Pardon? I said he's not lying. <laughs> oh, here, a like, comedian here. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I can be extremely unpleasant because I, I. I don't know about y'all, but when when I'm after it, I I be serious about it. I can't do everything, but the things I can do, I am super serious about those things. So in as much as that's the case is when I'm pursuing a goal, that's the only thing I love. I don't love nothing else at that point. I just want that goal. Nothing else I love, nothing else I care about. And so I appreciate the people who can be around me and work with me through that. The good fortune is often when I'm you know, pursuing one of those things, it's something that can benefit all of us. And I think that you know, this space is something that has great warmth because we get to bring you guys in it, great men. And I know that you guys are all going to do very meaningful works that will just reverberate all of the goodness that we have. And, you know, so happy to hear that you have a daughter. And I know that you're going to raise her up in a great way. And I see your ambition and your seriousness. And it's a good example for all of the young men watching so that they can know what is going to be next in their life. And, Every one of you guys I'm very proud of. I, I don't know how long. It looks like damn near three hours. Uh, we'll, we'll go through and figure out the timing of this thing and how we want to better allocate the time. But I appreciate you all being a part of this, this building with me. You know, we're all producers. We're builders. We're creators. And so it's an honor to be with you guys and have you guys as brothers as we move forward and you know exercise positive example and positive influence in the world. So I appreciate all of you guys who, who come here because... The internet is phenomenal, uh, but the reason we have all those sections of assassin around the world is because we want guys to be able to experience this, you know, experience a solid relationship where you can be positive. You have a place to vent, to express yourself, a place to be rebuilt and reinvigorated so you can get after the things that you really want. We also are going to get some work in after this, which is amazing. I hope you guys still got time to get this work in. Everybody's suited and booted. Did you you got the, the clothes change? I didn't bring it. Okay, it's all good. It get like that. You fresh though, brother. The bro Brody drip be in the future. Yeah. <laughs> the drip is in the future. <laughs> all right, the future drip. Um, but you know, all in all, I'm extremely proud and thankful to everyone who's contributed to this. And I have nothing more. I yield the floor. Well, yes. I'm thankful that Kanae could come in town. This is his first time seeing 
the headquarters. Seen him coming to headquarters. Shout out to Kenan in a real way. And he came from out of town. And he's a legend. Just for all of the folks watching who don't know what's up with Kene, um, it was during the boot camp, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. We had boot camp. Kene had no shoes because we had turned up the night before. I think that's what happened. We was in the, the penthouse turning up. He left his dress shoes and maybe your sneakers at the penthouse. I don't know. Something there. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Oh, you left it in the Uber. Yeah. Uh, wherever it was, he came to boot camp the next day, and Brody ran barefoot in Vegas. Right, his man's a savage, off some Flintstones ish, man. Yeah, he going in, but that's how we. That's how we got to be, which is no excuses. You know what the job is, get the job done, and, and that's a real one for you. Um, all done. Fantastic. You want to bring on the Saints so they can get theirs in? I should have brought them in before, but since they're there, we'll honor them. Um, Nate, Lou, you want to, uh, for the good of the assassin, before we head out? For the good of the assassin, man, I'm just thankful to be here and to get some good advice, man. I appreciate you all for coming through, showing some, showing your support. And that's it for me. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. Call someone else. Jonathan. Uh, for the good of the assassin, I'm thankful to be around a bunch of other people that are entrepreneurial because by myself, I wouldn't have the motivation or decision making to decide and go for something as what seems wild as a business. Um, something you've never done, nobody around you has done it before. So to have other people around, like, for example, a Mitch that have done this thing, even, of course, you yourself, Marquette, um, you know, it's really nice to be able to rely on people and contact people and really start getting it going. So I'm grateful for that part of the community. Absolutely. And, and shout out to Mitchell, shout out to the Saints who are confirmed. St. Key, talk to us. For the good of the assassin, I'm thankful I was able to meet up with the Atlanta Saint on friday we got in a workout so i'm thankful for the whole organization and being able to start something and you know in georgia we got uh ivan over there ivan the gentleman is out he's in georgia right yeah good brother very good brother some serious drip as well so definitely tap in with him melvin it's on you close this out let me unmute him hold on i need to... yeah <laughs> for the good of the fashion I am very happy to have a community of like-minded young individuals who are willing to take take the world by the horn, take the bull by the horn, go out there and claim their opportunities. To have people that are willing to have the drive to take a chance, regardless, the people who are positive focused, to have people that I can come in the midst of them and be renewed again. Mm. I can come in the midst of them and all my troubles can be left behind. I'm happy to have a fellowship of people who we know that we will take over and we know that more of us is better than what it is now. That coming together, we can change the future of tomorrow. I'm glad to have the fashion. I'm glad to have a family in all of you for the good of the fashion. Mm, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Peace to the peace saints. saints. Well, yeah. Ain't nothing to say peace after that. Saints, it's been a pleasure to have this time to fellowship with you. Until next time. Can you hit that for us? Great. All right.